Hello everyone. Forgot to change the stream title before it went up. Hopefully it's up now and hopefully you can hear me. It's been a long time since the last stream so I wouldn't be surprised if some of these settings are uh, a bit... Yeah, I forgot to change the stream title so no it's not shmups. <clears throat> We're not shmupping. Hello! Hello, hello, hello. Okay. So we've got that stopped there. Let's... Hopefully the um, sound is okay and all. Been a long time since the last stream, so apologies if any of the settings are not good. Hello. Look at that title screen. Beautiful. One of the best title screens ever, I think. Absolutely amazing. Great. It's such like, on top of looking really good, it's a really good, it capitalizes on the character design really well, you know? <clears throat> it sets across the vibe of the, the game really well. It's great. Look at that. So good. Hello. Well, if you're going to bed, I encourage you to go to bed. Um, I probably won't be at it too long, unfortunately. But uh, yeah, there, there should be a VOD afterwards. I always get messages after the streams because things get cut off you know if i go over two hours or something i think the vod initially only shows the last two hours but you just have to give it a while but there's always comments about that people thinking the vod is broken or whatever it just takes a while to process or something hello all right yeah off you go off off to bed We're not selecting hard. I tried a, a hard run of Nocturne at one point. I don't know how far I got, but I do remember at the very start, there's a tutorial against a Preta, I think it is, and uh, all you can do is attack it. And he crit me and I died in the, the very first battle. And I went, okay, maybe this hard mode wasn't very well thought out. Or maybe I missed him or something, I don't know. But I'm pretty sure I died against the Preta when all you can do is just punch him. I've been okay. It's, you know, I've been better, I've been worse. It's been an unfortunately busy year. Oh, I have the sound on my TV. You might be getting some feedback. I'll keep it low. You probably can't hear it. I can barely hear it myself. <clears throat> Thank you, Anthony. It's 1 a.m. in Chicago. I thought it was a little bit earlier than that. You're, maybe it's a daylight savings that threw me off. I thought maybe at the latest it would be about 12 in the U.S., but maybe the daylight savings, there's a difference there. So... I'm just trying to adjust my setup a little bit, make it more comfortable. See if I can sit back a little bit. Oh yeah, I used to. Yeah, I used to rest this on the air. I'm remembering now. I'm remembering how he's. Just... There, if I rest this on the arm of the chair, you might get some rattling noises, but I think it allows me to sit back a bit. Okay, hopefully that didn't come out, so I can. Okay, I can sit back now. This is a lot better. Yeah, I remember this now. Okay. Thank you, Concivos, Con or however you pronounce that. And to everybody for all the well wishes. Thank you. It's been a while. It has indeed. I'm sorry for the lack of streams this year. Where do you see yourself in 10 years? Unfortunately, in this fucking chair. 
I actually think this chair might kill me. It seems like it's bad for blood flow. Is it, it's a spooky Halloween chair. No, it's not really. Okay, someone want to tell me what this guy's name is? I think it's... Na Naoki Kashima. I think it was. It's the closest thing he has, but I don't know which is last, which is first and which is last. Hito Shura. But that's... I'm just going to put in Naoki Kashima. I think that's what it was. I don't know which is first and which is last, though. It feels, feels kind of like Naoki should be a first name. It's a Kash. It doesn't really matter, does it? Name him Funky Kong. <laughs> yeah, SMT Nocturne featuring Dante from the Devil May Cry series now with Funky Mode. Bayo, I'm going to try and talk a little bit lower. <coughs> I don't know if I'm too loud. You let me know what the audio levels are like or if I need to turn it up a bit. Um, yeah, I, I'd still like to do a Bayo commentary someday, but I don't have the, the time for it. can't call him Kana because that's a girl's name I think I'll just call him Nashima I forget what I called him on my first playthrough this probably means something terrible in Japanese but whatever It's a flip name, is it? It's the wrong way around. <laughs> but we're off to a good start. Whatever. Pr basically, nobody calls him that in the game, though. Anyway, <laughs> they all call you by your nickname. I think, anyway. Kemi has got a non-compete clause. He didn't say as much, but he's got a non-compete, which is pretty normal. I think even I was under a non-compete clause at one point. My job. But it's pretty normal. I think a year is extreme, but it's pretty normal. So it just means he can't work for another game developer, but it also means that he probably has to be very careful about what he says as well. So I don't know how much he's... You know, if he wasn't under a non-compete and he just had to take a year off or something, he probably would be talking about old arcade games and stuff all the time. Um, but... Uh, he, has to be, he probably has to be careful about what he says because if he says stuff, it could be taken to mean that he's talking about... Project GG in a roundabout way or something, which I, I don't I don't think it's been cancelled, at least not yet. But uh, my interest in it has diminished a lot, to say the least. <coughs> Mostly paying attention to the chat here. So I did play a little bit at the start, just to make sure that it would be okay to stream. test the setup and all um, yeah so much has happened yeah it's Cammy leaving the thing it's 
so many games out this year. I need to just make this chat a little bit bigger. Okay. <clears throat> Good morning, Tater. you've been playing recently I've been playing a lot of stuff a lot um, that's probably the main reason why I haven't been streaming is just because there's been so much stuff for me to play the story in this thing will will taper off after a bit go down here to the TV um, yeah it's the main reason why I haven't been streaming is because there's been so much stuff to play but I don't like to stream my first playthrough of stuff I made an exception with the shmups because they're very arcadey but apart from that I don't really stream my first playthrough of things um, <clears throat> so I've been prioritizing playing new stuff not just new stuff, I got a Steam Deck and I was working on the backlog as well. <laughs> Pagodemonium forever. Pagodemonium is old and busted. That's old and busted. Yeah, the Devil's Third stream was fun, but I just, I really wouldn't want to, um, I really wouldn't want to ruin my experience with a game, you know. Like, I, I streamed uh, Resident Evil Remake, that was my first time playing that, the first remake, and I did it because I assumed that it would be closer to the original than it really was and uh so um i didn't enjoy that part of it like i didn't i felt like i had done the game a disservice by streaming it um just for my own sake right probably most of you had already played it um but for my own sake i felt like i had done myself a disservice is there a way to turn these stupid fucking emo things off I don't know okay <laughs> uh, the DMC2 commentary yeah it's going great Good night, improv. Don't let me keep you up. Probably won't be at it too long anyway, so. Yeah, the VOD will go up automatically afterwards, JK. No worries. I know it's later than usual, so. Uh, I did play FF16, yeah. Um, 
if you if you love the combat then um, yeah you might enjoy other action games that are kind of like it uh, I think that there was there was there was a lot that was satisfying about it um, I just think it's a shame that it's so based around cooldowns you know so if you're thinking of trying other action games they don't generally have cooldowns like that and I think that's to their benefit um, I can understand like a lot of things it's a trade-off you know um, the cooldowns allow some of the moves to be bigger than they would otherwise because you if you could spam them they would just be ridiculous but <clears throat> Yeah, I, I still wouldn't own a PS5 myself, if not for being gifted one. Um, so I can relate to that, alright. I, I don't own many games for it. But I never had a PS4 Pro, so... It's nice in that way, that it's like a PS4 Pro Pro. That's a nice aspect of it, that was a big bonus of it. But yeah, I haven't bought the new Spider-Man. I haven't played the new God of War yet either. I'll probably play it eventually, but people people were messaging me immediately saying they they didn't address any of the things in the video that I cared about, so um, that kind of dampened my enthusiasm a lot. Maybe it's good though. I might like it more than the first one. I I would like to play. I would like to play it eventually um, and I definitely like to have more stuff on my PS5 that actually feels like a PS5 game you know takes advantage of the hardware the controller is great yeah the controller really is great it's great all right where are we going I go up to the roof or something, don't we? Yes, it is. It's the, the version with Dante, yeah. Yeah, the atmosphere is incredible. The graphics hold up really well as well. Uh, I wasn't... I was talking. I wasn't really paying attention to what Chiaki said. <laughs> when I was downstairs. I think you have to go to the basement and you have to go to the roof. You definitely have to go to the roof. I think maybe you have to find the... I'm kind of hesitant to say this because I don't want to ruin anybody else's image of him, but you have to find Job in the, the basement, <laughs> you know? I just think of him as Job from Arrested Development <laughs> whenever I see him. Um, no, maybe that's after the conception. Let's go to the roof. Oh, 
Halloween's a pretty big deal in Ireland, yeah. I would say. I mean, I don't really have any comparison, you know, so. Uh, where the fuck are we going, then? Just gotta explore a bit more. <coughs> I, I don't really have any interest in the MGS3 remake. <coughs> or any remakes, for that matter. I haven't played the Resident Evil 4 remake. Um, there's too many fucking remakes, you know. Yeah, Halloween has definitely got some of its roots in Ireland anyway. Um, Samhain, it was called. So, it probably is a bigger deal here than it is in most places, yeah. My review of The Last of Us 2 was done on the base PS4. Um, I'd say it runs pretty well. I can't remember off the top of my head, but I'm pretty sure it's 30 FPS. It would, it would have to be with those graphics. Um, but I think it ran pretty well. Impressive. I haven't played it on the PS5. Kind of bugs me when I can't you want to make in videos especially when I was doing reviews I had this kind of line in my head of um, you know old school game reviews and even probably a lot today have this thing where they kind of feel like trailers almost especially in the beginning they'll start off with a bunch of gameplay footage that's like almost cut like it's a trailer for the game and I never wanted to do that because it's a review. It shouldn't be a trailer or an ad for the game, right? Um, but conversely, I don't want to show games in their worst possible light either. So a little bit frustrating to me that I was playing it on a base PS4, but I, I just couldn't spring for a pro, you know. Um, but yeah, I was trying. To, I was trying to walk that line between, you know, not being an ad, but not being unkind, you know, needlessly unkind either. So, I like to show games at the best graphics quality wherever I can. But that Last of Us Two review and my God of War review, they're both on the base PS4. Dead Space remake is better than the original. Yeah, uh, I haven't played it. You know, I bet a lot of the remakes have, you know, some people like the new graphics enough that it makes the game for them or they add little features or the loading times are better. It's not that there's never anything to them. It's just, I don't know. I see it as kind of a waste. Yeah, initially, when they started doing remakes, I thought, well, maybe this is a good way to get people into... You know novice developers to get them into development you can train them up by getting them to do remakes that's probably a good way to do it where you're not wasting manpower you know but there's just too many of them that I, that can't be what's happening there's too many of them it's a shame you know people have been talking about how it's a good year for games but then they'll go they'll talk like oh resident evil 4 remake and metroid prime remastered came out this year like they're they're not new games maybe resident evil 4 does enough different to make it a new game but can they inspect anything here doesn't look like it it's a cool room though you feeling the halloween vibes yeah
Yeah, Pizza Tower was great. Really enjoyed it. Da -na -na -na. Na -na 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 -na. Do we face him or run away? You can't actually die here, can you? Baffled by the claims 2023 is a good year for games. I I'm not baffled by it. Um, I'm not into everything that's come out this year though there's a bunch of stuff I haven't played I haven't played Baldur's Gate 3 Yeah, boo, JMD. <laughs> I'm hitting you with the jump scare stream out of nowhere. It's a jump scare stream. Nobody expects it. Who's that dude? Seems like a reputable, reputable little guy. What's your shield for the best controller? Um, for fighting games and Rain World, well, Rain World has digital controls, I'm pretty sure. So you don't really need anything except a D-pad for that. Um, for fighting games, I don't know. I, I really like the PS5 controller, but that's as a PS5 controller with the triggers and stuff, you know. Uh, I don't know, I'm not the right guy to ask. You look into a what a hitbox. There you go. I mean, it's really just a keyboard, though. <laughs> the D-pad on the PS5 is just standard PlayStation D-pad. If you've used any of them, it's maybe slightly better than average because it's got this kind of the plastic is different or something. Um, so it maybe feels a little bit more clicky, a little bit more than the usual PlayStation D-pad. But if you're not using it on a PS5, you're not going to get the best features of the controller. And I'm pretty sure it has sticks that drift like a Switch controller. So that's a pretty big fucking downside, especially considering how expensive it is. get dual sense features on pc i didn't know that it makes sense though yeah for the first party games at least probably
Here we go. Is the sound okay for everybody? Okay, cool. These old controllers, man. Strong. Google Sword says, is there a limit on how much innovation can come from a game creator over years? Expecting them con to consistently innovate maybe seems unfair. I agree. Yeah. I don't, I don't think, um, I don't think there's anybody who can. Uh, or if they can, it takes a very long time. probably hear the rumble can you it's pretty strong I have it resting on my leg yeah there's some games that would be nice to stream but I wouldn't want to spoil them I'm like Ghost Trick, yeah. You know, I considered doing Silent Hill today instead, but it's just not. Just don't think it's the kind of game that should be streamed. So we already have this, right? Yeah. Alright, physical attack skills. Alright, now we're playing. It's the shoulder buttons to turn the camera. I never thought about it before, but it looks very MGS, this area. Little cameras and something about the writing on the door and all that. The simple geometric shapes.
That sounds like a great idea, Chili Rama. Do you think base options on a console that will hide all warnings slash tutorial messages should be implemented? I ask because Outer Wilds DLC had a start a message that sort of spoiled part of the game. Well, I didn't know about that DLC message, but yeah. For those who don't know, one of the features about the PS5 that I think is kind of interesting um, and that I... I don't know, I actually don't know how much it's utilized, but I, I like it in theory anyway, is you can go into the settings and just change certain settings that the game can pull from when you first boot it up. Like, do you like inverted stick controls? What difficulty level do you like? Stuff like that. And so the game can then just default to all that when it's boot up for the first time. Um, so that would be a good one, yeah. I'll, s I'll give you... A I'll give you a thought. It's not really a new thought, right? But I'm try I always try and stay tight-lipped about games that I haven't played too long ago, but I kind of want to get this one off my chest. Um, Mario Wonder, right? Obviously, at least a good game. I don't know where I'd rank it or whatever right now. It's too soon to say, right? But obviously worth playing. Um, enjoyable. enjoyable. I enjoyed it. Um, of course... I think it's it's not that much easier than the old games you know uh there are some sections in it that are quite difficult you know i don't know if there's anything i, I don't know i haven't played the special world in super mario world in, in a good while right there is stuff in there that feels about that level or maybe even harder right but it's a it's a smaller percentage of the game like they tend to have they tend to have a really hard level. This is a Mario convention now at this point. There's a really hard final level, which is harder than anything that was in the earlier Mario games, right? But the baseline level of challenge is lower than there was. So it kind of averages out, you know? And so there's a, there's some extra levels in Mario world that are quite challenging, right? It's not really a surprise. But I, what bugs me about it is you know i'm pretty sure i said something along these lines years ago like i complained about the fact that in mario galaxy 2 there's all this stuff for people to just skip the game basically right and some of the pushback that i got on that was well okay you know maybe i have a point like my point was that this is going to degrade people's skills over time if you just keep giving them more and more ways to get out of it it's going to degrade people's skills and they're not going to be able to play like the overall difficulty of games will have to drop to compensate for it and the pushback that i got or that i seem to remember getting at the time was something like well you know at least if they do this they can make the levels harder right because people will be able to get through them for free and so they can make the levels harder where is that in wonder where is it because wonder has invincible characters right you don't even have to play all the levels because you can skip certain levels to get, you know, you don't need all the wonder seeds to make it to the end. There's invincible characters and there's an online thing where you can basically act as a checkpoint for another person. So where's the difficulty? You know, where is it? It's kind of fun to play it online in the harder levels. You know, that's kind of fun. And like, it could have the whole game could have been a lot harder and and it would have been fun for everybody probably that way you know so where I honestly honestly the level of challenge in the game is not that bad it's not that bad. like and platformers are just fun to play anyway right if you like in you can die in world one one of mario if you're not careful and i mean like probably when i when i was streaming mario 35 right how many people died at the first fucking goomba there was like someone in every game right I, it probably happened to me on a couple of occasions as well you can die in one one of them and the same is true in this game as well you can die right if you miss a jump you miss the jump and it's over right and, and that is one thing that i like about it that the the four major power-ups there's not a tanuki one or whatever i know there's badges and all that but you know at least for the four major power-ups there's not a tanuki or a cape or whatever um, and that's nice so the level of challenge is really not that bad but i just i don't yeah i just it just bugs me that you know people are 
people give you these arguments and like you just you it's just naivety right like if nintendo <laughs> if the games didn't get harder let's just put it that way they haven't gotten harder right and there's more accessibility options than ever and they haven't gotten harder and i have i played pikmin 4 recently as well and i have a kind of similar complaint about that as well and this is a complaint about a lot of games in general right everybody's big up on accessibility options these days everybody loves accessibility all right celeste somebody mentioned celeste celeste accessibility mode i don't really mind right like i'm i'm willing to put that stuff aside D developers are going to do what they want to do right so first of all i can't control them at least celeste is hard enough to warrant something like that is my point right at least i can imagine that most people would struggle with the final levels like especially when you get into the the later stuff in the game most people would struggle with that right probably like the vast majority of people would struggle a lot on some of the later levels but pikmin 4 it's not just the excessive hand holding at the beginning but the controls in pikmin 4 are the, easily the worst in the series easily and and uh, surprise surprise the boogeyman strikes it's halloween the boogeyman strikes again the context sensitivity boogeyman is to blame for why pikmin 4's controls are so bad because it keeps locking on to random fucking things i lost pikmin over it i did I, indisputably i lost pikmin over this because you'd have say a big enemy and it would lock on to a small enemy and it just even if that small enemy dies in one hit from a pick like it's a little guy that the pikmin lands on him and he dies the cursor locks onto him there's all kinds of little context sensitive things that are put in like when you press the button to throw pikmin onto an item and it stops it stops registering your button press after the they say the fifth one if it's an item that can be carried by five people it stops registering your button press so that you don't throw too many pikmin on it but what really happens then is it just makes the controls feel bad like i'm pressing the button and nothing's happening and and people will say well it's an accessibility thing right but, you know not everybody can aim as good as you okay like i'm not i i split myself across a lot of games so i'm not i'm not top tier master level at any specific game you can name right so but i have a lot of experience with lots of games and so i'm better than most people at most games right so fair enough most people can't aim as well as i can but all these accessibility options always run one way is my point they always run one way you know yeah sorry i i stopped yeah 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 whatever we'll we'll skip a little bit of dialogue to get going they always run one way you know Wait, where's my option to turn that off why can't we just turn it off I just I don't know it just bugs me I feel like I, I can be reasoned with you know I'm because I'm a more hardcore whatever term you want to use than average I'm willing to say okay fine make those settings to default if they're default that's fine I know I can go in and turn them off right like not everybody will think to go into the settings so you set the settings to whatever is the most casual option fair enough but it just bugs me that every every time it always runs the other way, you know? I, I enjoyed both games, by the way. This is a bit of a spoiler for Pikmin, but... I wasn't loving Pikmin 4, but when I got the Olimar mode... Olimar mode is good. It's basically like they put a full-blown mini sequel to Pikmin 1 into Pikmin 4, which is fantastic. I can't I really can't quibble with the amount of content in the game at all. But those little control problems, like no amount of content will solve those little control problems that eat away at me every every time I'm playing it, you know?
Ah, I can just auto this. Somebody, I, this was a long time ago in the chat, but what are we doing here? We're doing strength, right? Is there any reason not to let it continue at this point? This just means it wants to change a skill or something, right? Alright, we'll let it continue. Ah, cool. Now, somebody asked this much earlier, but they were, they were, I think somebody said, would you review Tears of the Kingdom for one million dollars? Uh, yeah, I think I would. I think I would. Just get on that. Um, if I was ever, so this is not a confirmation that I'm doing a review or anything, but if I was ever going to review anything again, it would probably be Tears of the Kingdom. So I think I'll keep my thoughts a little bit closer to my chest on that one. But, uh, I mean, you've seen the context sensitivity video. It's definitely more context sensitive than Breath of the Wild. Yeah, look, I must have missed him when I was playing hard. Look at this. Oh, my God. Oh, I can't even use items at this point. Oh, maybe you can. Maybe you're supposed to press all of <laughs> Well, we'll find out when I go back in. I don't think so, though. I think it just shows up on the list there, right? So I'm dead. So not even hard mode. This, this isn't hard mode. Amazing. I suppose... I don't think there's anything I could have done. I don't think I can even run at this point. I'm not sure. We'll find out when we get back in. I haven't played Downpour, so... Don't have anything to say there. Uh, this one was not context sensitivity. <laughs> Unfortunately... Can't play in context sensitivity for this one. Press and hold circle to strafe if you use the shoulder buttons. Oh, right, 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 right. Forgot about that. I think I used that in the Nala dungeon to try and help keep my bearings. to tail form no I don't I'm hoping it's not broken as long as it's not broken um, um, no I might um, try and go back and do a couple of bug fixes at some point I, I just don't have the time right now I don't, need, I don't have the time right now Oh yeah, people keep asking about the cameo thing. Um, I reckon... Yeah, I reckon like people seem to have a good read on it. Yeah, if I... Oh, there we go. Yeah, the items are on left and right. Okay. So I could retreat here. I can talk to him already as well. He won't listen. Yeah.
Um, I think people have a good read on the Kamiya situation. They they were talking about it last year. Um, it didn't seem like it didn't seem like good news to me back then. Kamiya was talking about how Project GG has increased in scope. You know, he was talking about if it was just me, the game would probably have such and such a, a scope, but the scope has recently increased. And I, I didn't take that as a good sign. Um, I think it, yeah, I think it does seem likely that he left over something that they were pushing on the project. I think it would be strange for them to cancel it though, because they seemed very enthusiastic about it. In fact, that might have been its undoing might have been the reason why there were so many um, people pushing on it, you know? <clears throat> yeah, my hope for Kamiya is just that. I don't know. My, my hope is just that he will direct another game someday. He himself, not that he'll become a mentor, because honestly I don't, you know, maybe I just didn't uh, imbibe enough optimism from the wonderful 101, but I don't actually trust that he can mentor someone and that they can get to his level, <laughs> right? So I d since I don't believe that that's, a likely outcome I would rather just get some more games from him so I don't really want him to become a mentor I don't want him to oversee other pro people's projects or something I just want him to be the director of a game straight up and that's it um because there's yeah I've watched his I've watched his uh YouTube videos yeah um it's funny, I think some people were surprised by how likable he came across because they're only used to him from Twitter, you know? But anyway. Um, yeah, I just want him to direct another game. You know, it's a shame that it's going to be at least a year before he can start on another one, but um, I hope that that's his plan. And it, I don't care if it's a big game or a small game. That's If it's a small game, fine. Probably still can't actually recruit demons yet. Probably should have hit the other guy first. Well, they're probably they probably both pretty resistant to. Physical. <clears throat> get very far in here so I'm gonna go back and get a free we can get this is I think the one time in the game where you can get free heals yeah I wouldn't really count on him to be doing his own games either he said that he he's probably not gonna do that he might have to be careful about what he says because of the non-compete um, because it could be taken as info about Project GG, so... I, I don't think that's been cancelled. At least not yet. But I don't know. Yeah, I just really want him to direct another game, you know? Not co-direct, not to or someone else, not none of that, because... It's just different. If he's the one who directs it, it just turns out different, you know? Yeah, Sakurai playing arcade games, that was good with the Game Center. With Ar Ari no Kacho. Uh, that was a good little series, actually. Let's do Agility. Mm, yeah. Okay. 
I've been tempted, Audrius. I've been tempted to do a top, top twenty-five or something. It's very tempting. Uh, I'll be back in a minute. Before I go, I enjoyed SMT5, but if it comes to PC, it will be the most tempted I've ever been to do another mod, because I'm not saying I will, because it might not be easy to do, but I would really love to pull the level scaling out of that game. Really, I think it was, I think it was a terrible decision, the level scaling. It was a, it was a really, really bad choice. I don't know how else to put it into words. It feels antithetical to what I enjoy about Shin Megami Tensei. Um, it's by far the biggest problem with the game, and it seems like the kind of thing that might just... might be a one-line fix if, if it was implemented a certain way. It probably Because probably what it is is there's a certain multiplier that takes effect depending on your level compared to the enemy's level. And it might be possible to just set that multiplier to one. And if you could do that, the game would be way, way better. A, cu a couple of battles would be ruined because of it. There's one... I can think of at least one gimmicky battle at the end. This is count as a spoiler, I don't know, whatever. But there's a gimmicky battle at the end where there's a bunch of demons that are considered low level demons but they're all level 99 and that's what makes it a hard battle you know like you have a level 99 pixie and stuff that would be completely ruined by not having the level scaling but i would give that up in a heartbeat to get rid of it um because it was it was a terrible terrible choice anyway i'll be back in a, in a minute
I know the gameplay isn't why you're all tuned in here, but I do wonder, is it it's probably on the VOD, it's probably a especially frustratingly slow progress through the game, you know? Stopping every five minutes to rant about Pikmin 4's controls or whatever. <clears throat> Hello. More off-the-cuff recommendations like that. Yeah, well, I've been working on some recommendation videos. I think I need to loosen up on them. I don't know. It's... The theory videos are very hard to make, and I think... Kind of let it get to me. In terms of <laughs> just writing a recommendation video should not take very long at all you know um, so <laughs> but it feels like it can't be that easy you know if I just if I was to write it in one day or something and then spend maybe a day getting gameplay footage and another day or two editing the video I really should be able to crank them out, but I just thought, uh, I don't know. It's nice to have something interesting to say all the same, even if it's just a recommendation, you know? <clears throat> I'm not done with videos. I, I, I haven't written anything for the blog this month, so I apologize for that. I've been doing little quick says over on the Patreon, if you haven't been reading them. Um, but I was, I was, uh, since I got back to work after doing the backlog, I've primarily been working on videos. So temper your regulus expectations for now. Um, yeah, the, I have a new theory video that's coming along well. It's not really a blog. It's a Patreon uh, on the Patreon page. You don't have to be a subscriber to read any of it. Um, and I haven't really been writing stuff for very long. Um, yeah. So I have the next theory video is in good shape. It's been it's been a hard one though. There was a part in it that I really wasn't sure whether I should include it or not. And I nearly cut it and just left the video without it, but I really wanted to integrate it in somehow because it fits so neatly with some of the other stuff that I was saying and it just felt like it needed to be addressed and I don't know. So I've been writing that in, but yeah. It, I don't know when it'll be out. It could take a good while yet, but... Uh, it'll probably be about 15 to 20 minutes long, so it's not going to be a big... big watch. Yeah, I don't want to oversell my productivity because it hasn't been that great. You know, I did pause the Patreon for two months. So that was a, an especially unproductive time. Um, but 
It's taken me a while to ramp back up, but I'm, I'm fully back to work now and mostly focusing on videos for now. I really, I should have already got a video out though. Even just a recommendation video, you know? Um, well, first of all, Mushido is is on hold for now. We have a different game idea that we're working on. Um, but I don't really care what the reception of it is. Um, I would just like for it to not be a complete and utter bomb financially, <laughs> you know? Um, that would be nice. If it meant I can keep making stuff, that's all I, I really care about. Yeah, I've played SMT4 and Apocalypse. There has been a lot of layoffs, yeah. Uh, I don't really have anything to say about that. I've never been part of the industry. Apparently it's not uncommon for people to be laid off after um, games finish up and stuff. So I need to start paying attention to where I'm going or we'll be going around in circles all day like that fucking remake stream. Right, so we've been here. We'll go up to the roof. I don't think there's anything up there, but I haven't been there yet. Two people in Ireland really call each other spa. Um, I haven't heard that in a long time, but yeah, that, that would be spa as an insult. Uh, yeah, that was definitely lingo when I was growing up anyway. Maybe... This is obviously where we started. It's always worrying when you're in an SMT game and you don't know where the save room is. I just kind of want to go back and have a, a save and then I'll feel comfortable to just do whatever. Okay. If I remember right, you don't go into that room at the end until much later in the game. I might be wrong about that. But yeah, I don't think you go in there until much later. You interested in the N64 analog console? Uh, yeah. Um, what I would say though is this is not really analog's fault because what they do is they pair with um, 8 bit though for their controllers. The controller that they showed is just. 
Let's try and rain. Let's try and rain myself in and phrase this nicely. I don't think that the controller they showed is a good choice because can't really play Sin and Punishment on it, and Sin and Punishment is one of the better N64 games, so that's a bit of a problem. I've never played it myself, but I'm pretty sure the same is true for Bangai O as well. No, where the fuck is the Annex? I'm going to the wrong side, am I? It's over here. That's the elevator, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Upstairs. that other one. I think I thought that these doors were elevators. Um, Sin and Punishment they basically uh, okay. I thought that was an elevator. That's why I didn't go into it. I was there earlier and I thought it was a fucking elevator for some re reason. Oh, I picked a dial. I wasn't looking. I don't know what dialogue I picked. I said I was looking for something, I think. Um, Sin and Punishment, you are supposed to hold it. Most N64 games, right? It's got the three, the three prongs. You're supposed to hold the middle prong with your left hand and the other one with your right hand. Sin and Punishment is the other way around. You hold the right the middle part with your right hand and you use your left hand on the d-pad and stuff so you use the d-pad to move and the right hand for aiming of course it's kind of arbitrary right you know maybe if you're left-handed maybe that's not even a nice way to play the game but that's the way it was intended to be played and uh, the controller that they showed doesn't allow that to happen because the analog stick and the d-pad are on the same side There's actually, there's a problem, maybe there's a way to fix this, but on the Nintendo Switch Online version, there's also a problem with Sin and Punishment. Because maybe they didn't realize this or test it, but I think it has to do with, there's two aiming modes. Um, there's a kind of lock-on aim, which sticks on whatever target you choose, so that you can move around without having to worry about your aim, and just stick with the target that you've picked for now. But there's also a free aiming mode and you can kind of swap between them dynamically and whatever button combination you have to press on the switch version to achieve that is not good i can't remember the specifics but it's not good i think it, it meant that you have to stand still to change the lock on on the n64 online we have pixie now do we yeah we do okay I didn't read any of the text. I'm sorry. <laughs> where am I going now? Just tell me where I'm going now. I was talking the whole time I was talking to Pixie. I was I was talking about the fucking... Yeah, there's high Pixie. We need a card, obviously, to get through the... Uh... We need a card, obviously, to get through the thing. I think maybe for this part, you actually do just have to wander into a random room. I think there's a bunch of Preta in a room. 
maybe on the second floor. And that's how you get it. I seem to recall there being a fight in one of these rooms. Yeah, my switch has stick drift. Any desire to make commentaries again? Um, yeah, I don't know, they do well. <laughs> I know that people want long videos. They do well and that's nice. Um, they're a big effort to Demon Souls and the Demon Souls one wasn't that big an effort. Dark Souls one was a considerably bigger effort, but the Devil May Cry and Beautiful Joe ones were huge <laughs> effort. Um, they were entirely scripted, so I, w I wouldn't want to do anything like that again unless it's the next Kamiya game that I do. Whether that would be Okami or Bayonetta, I don't even know. Um, I'd, I might be okay with some commentaries. You know, maybe it'd be fun to do something like Ghosts and Goblins Resurrection or something like that. I don't know, I just think people maybe expect more out of me at this point, you know? Just, a stream, a stream is one thing. I'm not very articulate. Off the cuff. And a stream is one thing, but I think people expect more when they see a video, you know? Um, so I don't know that it would live up to anybody's expectations. We need as many demons as we can get as quick as possible. Nice to find another save point. I don't know if there is one on this side of the hospital though. Mm. 
Yeah, well, I think it's hard to, you know, uh, Kinral says I enjoyed the unscripted commentaries even more so than the scripted ones. Um, first of all, there's just kind of a few competing forces there. There's, you know, what will make people happy and what I personally want to work on. But also, like, I don't know how else to put it. The, how much of the enjoyment is derived from the fact that you just are a fan of those Souls games more so than Beautiful Joe? There's not a huge amount of Beautiful Joe fans out there, as Kamiya himself <laughs> said in his most recent video, right? So it's just that the Beautiful Joe commentary might be better than the Devil May Cry commentary. I don't know that it is. It might be. There's certainly some points in it which are very interesting, I think. Um... Like, I don't know how much of this came across in the video, but I think it was really cool and interesting that I was able to reverse engineer the critical dizzy system just by playing the game. Um, I was very proud of that, and I think that that's cool. But, uh, but th that video, the Beautiful Joe video, was never, ever going to get as many views as the Devil May Cry one, ever. That, that was just never going to happen, you know? Um, so I'm not sure if that will start the fight with Fornius so I'm going to try and go around the other way first um, so you know Breath of the Wild I think it recently crossed my review recently crossed a million views it's the only review, straight up review I've ever done that has a million views but it has that because it's a Breath of the Wild review you know <laughs> So my point is just that when people tell me that they like this or they like that, it's very hard to parse because they're all about different games and the different games have different levels of popularity. So it's hard to know what that means. We don't actually have the guy because you have to summon him, which is unfortunate. I don't know if these can be recruited. Yeah, I don't think so. It's probably not gonna... Oh, okay. I love how fast the battles are in Nocturne, in terms of the animation and stuff, you know. Um. No. I feel like this is something that uh, I think his name is Katsura Hashino. I think it's something. He's the director of Nocturne, same director as Persona Five, by the way. For anybody that doesn't know, Persona Three, Four, and Five, um, and the new Metaphor game. I think one thing all of his games have in common is that the battles are able to resolve really quickly. I think he's as impatient as I am about turn-based fights. Like, JRPGs really, really get stuck in, in a rut more than anything. It's just astonishing, really. You know, you have, for example, an Earthbound. It, I think it's Earthbound. When you are over leveled for a fight the fight just ends it doesn't even go into the thing you know and granted i'm not the biggest jrpg player out there but i've played a fair number of them and i don't think that feature i i don't think i ever personally saw that feature again until um persona 5 so it's probably in some other or jrpg that i've never played like dragon quest or some shit but um yeah, just auto resolve the fight, you know. Yeah, the, and yeah, and they, they run away from you in Persona Five as well. Um, and just you know the Persona Five thing. I don't. I'm sure I'm not the only person who had this idea, right? But the fact that all the things are mapped to different buttons so that you don't have to navigate as many menus as before, you know, the iconic Persona Five attack item, whatever. I mean, I was wondering why JRPGs didn't do that for years. Is there some reason why they didn't do it? Is there, no, they just never did it, right? Probably loads of people were thinking the same thing. Surely we can just map each one to a, a different button, you know? But they never did it. 
It's all been menus for some reason. What the fuck? You know? Get a move on as a genre. Thanks, buddy. Still didn't send him the fucking Kodama. Probably should have just autoed and saved the MP for a heal afterwards instead. Does he have a heal? He doesn't. I don't really like using items in JRPGs, they're kind of like my self-imposed hard mode. I try not to resort to it sometimes though. What's up? Uh, he's probably not going to join me. But maybe he can join you? Probably not gonna join me. Fuck it, we'll give it to him. Oh, cool. Nice. Yeah, I didn't know he could join. lucky all right yeah 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 i think that's a fight that's why i don't want to talk is there this would be the opposite side of the annex right there's nothing there you know i definitely want to find a, a save point now well i have four party members now It's not a fight. underground so maybe I can get back to the save point. I forget if this is I forget if you do auto, will they all pick the same target? Probably not, so I'm not gonna risk it right now.
That's Job's room. Oh, I didn't think I'd get, it. get into battles in this room. Uh, oh, I don't have a Preta. Fuck. Ah, they do. They all pick the first target. That's good. What was I was playing? I think it's Etrian Odyssey where they don't, they don't target the same fucking thing. Tedious. No, that's not. Oh, right. Yes. 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 Here we go. Can't talk to dark alignment demons normally, they need to initiate, I see. Oh, you're welcome for the answer about commentaries. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, I can see how it's appealing. I generally would recommend. So you're saying that, you know, you can use it to revisit your favorites and I, I get that. Obviously, I would recommend trying to play them instead. But I know that people can put the videos on while they're working or whatever and you can't play a game while you're working because it takes your full attention so i get that um, i don't really want to become yeah i do i enjoy that aspect of it in moderation is my point you know i i don't want to become a way to vicariously experience games though because i don't think that that's really possible Especially not for a first time playthrough anyway, but I know that's not what you mean. So. Oh, the unity thing. I forgot about that already. Yeah, that was a big fucking... That was a big one. We didn't get a chance to talk about that yet. Um, yeah, that was pretty messed up, what they were trying to do. I think anybody who's using unity... I mean, this, the thing is... No, let's not listen. He's unhappy, okay. It's funny, because as soon as it happened, you go, okay, well, that's killed all trust in the company completely forever, you know. How do people get into those positions and make those decisions? Just, yeah, you know what I'm going to do today? What? What are you going to do? Well, we're going to announce something. Yeah, okay. And it's going to completely destroy everybody's trust in our brand forever. Okay. And we might make some money off it. Okay. Go for it. Just go for it. You know, 
I don't know. I, I have to imagine. I'm not using Unity. I don't really have a dog in that fight. But I have to imagine most developers who are using it are thinking, okay, we're, def we're not doing it on the next project. It was, it was such, such a bad idea. Such a bad idea. Was there, was there some, there was a healing room down here as well, wasn't there? It's the one on the right here. Do you restore MP? You do, you fucking legend. You're absolutely astonishing. Okay. Free heals and free MP. It's practically a walking simulator right now. You look look how quick all this is. That's great. Cool. Battle over. Next battle. Great. I would like to get back to work on my engine, by the way. I, I really enjoyed that. It's the thing I've enjoyed working on the most of anything I've done in the last few years. I really want to go back to it. The instant I can justify spending more time on that, I'm doing it. Hey, Johnny, I've been all right, yeah. I'll be back again in a minute.
Hello everyone. Well, hello everyone, I'm back. Give me a second here. Hello, hopefully you can still hear me okay, I'm back. And I have a guest with me. Hello everyone. <laughs> uh, I've been recruited. <laughs> been recruited. We've united up. Is that what you mean? Is that what you meant to say? No, like a demon. Oh, you've been, oh right. Yeah. <laughs> like the game that I'm currently playing <laughs> yeah. and not the one. That I am thinking about one instead. <laughs> um, I walked past your room earlier and I heard you talking about, what was it, contact sensitivity boogeyman? Yeah. Well, it's a Halloween stream after all. <laughs> Never listen to your demons because they'll just change one of their good skills into something absolutely shit instead. So never ever listen to your demons. Oh, good morning, everyone. It's nighttime over there for most of them. Mm. I forget where I am and where I'm going now and again. I might be able to focus on the game. Right? <laughs> we were talking about the uh, Unreal or the, the Unity. Thing. That's where we left off, I think. Mm. Oh, there's a there's an exclamation mark there. Why have I not been using the fucking map? You've not been using the map? No. There's an exclamation mark. That was just a spirit, but maybe they maybe they have something new to say now. I kind of want to go back and see what that's about. So. You're not very far in. Game. Yeah, I know. I've been ta I was talking about the Pikmin 4 controls as well. <laughs> <laughs> Let's stop the game to talk about that for a while. They don't tune in for the game, they tune in for the discussion. The enlightening discussion. Well, I'm here for the game. I think I get enough of your enlightened discussion. <laughs> Yeah, you get all the pre-release versions. <laughs> <laughs> the pre-release nonsense, like Kojima's big brain, little brain, mall. <sighs> How's the hand? Yeah, it's okay. Um, it still feels so. For anybody who doesn't know, I had tendonitis. I think I still. I think it's the kind of thing that'll probably stick with me forever. Um, so I still sometimes feel like it's on the verge of acting up, but it's never been particularly bad. There was a time, I can't remember when it was, not so long ago, where um, I was I was playing more than I should have at the time. I think maybe it was when Tears of the Kingdom came out. Uh, I was playing a lot. There was something you were playing, I remember it, because uh, I remember you making noises about your hands. <laughs> what was it though? It was something, it's a while ago now, but you were playing something that was really bad. I don't know. Something where I had to mash a lot, maybe. Yeah, I'm trying to remember what it was, but like, I, I hear you like making noises. You have to mash a lot, well you don't have to, but you can mash a lot in Pikmin, and my hand hasn't been mashed enough when I was playing that just recently. I think it was a PC game. Hmm. Maybe. The mouse is the mouse is bad for it as well, lots of mouse movement. I think the exclamation mark was just the door that I opened earlier, the the um the gate that I used the key card on. I'm trying I'm trying I'm trying. We'll kill we will kill Fornius before I go. <laughs> Alright, or he'll kill us. 
time you do these streams, it's like only like the at first best hour the first of the game. Hour. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Four hours of it's stream. It's a taster, though. You know, one hour. It's a taster. Tomorrow will be Halloween over there for them, and now they know they can play Shin Megami Tensei Nocturne. They know how to play it now, and uh, they've seen the atmosphere and they've gotten involved, and they have a nice Halloween game to play. Have you actually talked about this game at all? <laughs> Look, Cammy is out of a job, okay? <laughs> yeah, we never went back to Metroid Prime. Maybe I'll start it over again. <laughs> it is it is a good Christmas game, I think, so. Metroid Prime? Yeah, I don't know, it's just a Christmassy game to me. I think I first played it around Christmas and it's got a nice snow level in it. We could use a hoopo. Oh. <laughs> I could use this, so I'm gonna try and talk to her. We got a lot of weaknesses though. Well, in your party? Yeah, I, know. I don't know. They, I, think, I wasn't really watching, I think one of them cast my IG or something. Yeah, maybe. I've been wondering about this because I think usually when I wanted to talk to them, I would pass over to Demifiend, but I haven't been doing that. I've been attacking them and then talking. I wonder if that changes anything. I don't know. You might. I mean, even if you do it in the case that they can have a disadvantage, they're more likely to listen. I don't know. I would have thought that it could piss some of them off, that you would attack them at all. This is not going well. Shouldn't have autoed there. <clears throat> All right, we can solve this. Maybe I should have just healed anything now. Yeah, it might not have been a good idea to heal him at all because they just get an extra turn off him. Although he would have, yeah, they would have got that extra turn anyway because he still would have been alive. So there's some SMT games where you can dodge magic and some where you can't, I think. I don't know if I go back to that. I'm not far from the heal room. If I go back to the heal room, I don't know whether it'll revive the. Or the risk, but since I'm going there anyway, I should use the, the DS guys. Oh, we can. He's probably better anyway. Should get me. I think you do later, but I'm not sure at this stage in the game they might let you away with it. You don't have to pay this guy anything at all, so. There's some um, there's some games as well where when you have the right when you have that demon already in your party, if you talk to them, they just don't fight you. Yeah. But I don't think that's not for. It's always kind of confusing when you play a series like this, and they they change little things every time, more so than it, because it's kind of abstract because it's menu based and stuff like that. It's harder to keep the rules of each individual installment in your head. You know, as opposed to like the difference between something like Ocarina of Time and Breath of the Wild is obviously just right there in your face. But oh, okay, Nocturne does that, so I could have saved that. Will of the Wisp play just talking to him. <laughs> Do they 
they give you items sometimes as well in this one? Maybe, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or like they heal you, I think. Sometimes. Yes, they do. They do positive things for you. Yeah, let's see. Oh. Well, you left anyway. Were you talking about coming at all? Yeah, a little bit. I was just saying that I want him to direct the game himself, you know? I don't know what's gonna happen with his YouTube channel, but it seems like he can't talk about too much, you know? Like even if he says, uh, oh, I, I, I really love this tokusatsu show, you know, <laughs> it's like, what does that mean? You know, because I feel like maybe Project GG is just canceled, but they seem so enthusiastic about it that I feel like they're gonna continue with it. Is that like you speculating on this curry? Well, I hadn't told them that. <laughs> I wasn't gonna. Not revealing not gonna, your secrets. No, not revealing the secrets. I was wondering, he talked about curry in the first episode, and I, I don't think that this is really. I don't think this is really. What he meant. But I was wondering if maybe the curry he was talking about was a metaphor because he can't really talk about games, right? So maybe he's trying to. to or his situation, so maybe he's trying to talk about his situation in a way. That, uh, I don't know. It is very like his games, though. He throws everything into them, and they somehow turn out good anyway. You know? so. <clears throat> what does this one look like? When people are talking about his underwear because right after he announced he was leaving, he posted a picture of his ripped underwear on Twitter. They were like blown open. It was mad. It looked crazy. Ah, oh, there's a save room. Yeah, I wonder if I come back to him when he... Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah? Yeah, you should. You should try and uh, remember. Oh, yeah, I'll try and remember to go back to him. And we have a heal room. Okay. Well, I'll go try Fornius now, then. There's not really any downside to trying him now. I'm probably close. There is a large cylinder. What will you do? I love that. Something about that line sticks with me. <clears throat> Hello, Patricia. No, I haven't played the. Uh, I haven't played Downpour. <laughs> it's fun kind of funny to think of him taking all those figurines out. I'm pretty sure he owned like all those figurines. If you, if you could, if you've ever seen a video, I don't know. It's probably on the wonderful 101 Kickstarter or something. There was a massive wall. Of figures, huge, huge wall of probably about six glass cases on top of each other. Next, like row after row and, and shelf after shelf of figures. <laughs> right, what's he weak to? Zio or Zion or something? Probably not Zen, but we have to try everything. <laughs> yeah. Zio, maybe? Yeah, my guess is Zio. It's good. The party composition is really good for this. Even the spacing of them. The fact that I'm getting a Zio every two turns is optimal. Alright, now we're now we're pressing turns. Okay? <laughs> you understand? <laughs> Actually, it would be optimal if I started on a Zio. Oh, nice. 
Mm. You might get it first time. Yeah, I maybe should have just punched him there to save the MP. <clears throat> You're saying it doesn't look all that different from the first one. No, not to me. Mm. But I like I think that's fine. Mm. It's been so long. It's the kind of game where they couldn't do everything they wanted anyway, right? Yeah. I only played about I think I played at most about ten hours of it. So the first one. So. It runs on the deck though, so I might, I might finally uh, get into it. Yeah, I've been trying to push him towards playing it, but he's the kind of person where if you push too hard, he just becomes very, very stubborn. It's not it's just that I have too many games I want to play. There's too, too much stuff. It's always hard to pick what the next thing is. You're always necessarily neglecting something else. You know? I saw that look on your face, so you think I'm going to be a hypocrite saying that? A little bit, yeah. <laughs> I do, <laughs> yeah. What's my game of the year? I don't know, I haven't really played that many games this year. Yeah, I don't know if you've played anything, really. I played the new Zelda, that was pretty much it. Have you played anything else? I played Bay Origins. Yeah. I enjoyed that a lot. Yeah, I really like Bay Origins, but I kind of feel like I'd be... I don't know, I kind of feel like I'd be being kind of an asshole if I said Origins was better than Tears of the Kingdom. <laughs> like, I'm know. not allowed to express an opinion on, on that okay. <laughs> right now because it's too soon. Like, I enjoyed them both. I can't really say which one I enjoyed more, but somehow it feels like a disservice. Hmm. I don't know. It's, it's, <laughs> it's a tough one. It's good though. I, I, one of the most pleasant surprises of the year, definitely, Bay Origins, because the demo didn't do it justice at all. The demo made it seem like it was going to be a little Bayo walking simulator that would be over in six hours and would have almost no gameplay whatsoever. Um, but it's a nice game. Yeah, Very I love Cheshire. It. Yeah. Cheshire is great, the fairies are great. And the tier and Ogs are better than any of the challenge rooms. At least, or they're at least better than the ones in two and three, anyway. But I like how the challenges are not just you're dropped into an arena. What are you doing? You're not listening to them. Never listen to the demons. Never, never. They just fuck up your plans. Never, never ever listen to the <laughs> demons. All right. You're too stiff. Hey, you gave me eight hundred and fifty maca. Nice. Oh, you beat Fornius. I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> um, yeah, the fairies were great. Also, spoilers. Spoilers, spoilers, spoilers. For Bayo Origins. The villains were great. The villains were yeah. better than they have <laughs> been since the first game. Um, oh, and I have a theory about Bayo Origins that I have to share. A story theory that I have to share. Okay, so now I'm really going to do massive spoilers for Bayo Origins. And it's a nice game, right? I don't know that I would say it's better than Bayo 3, but it's... Story-wise, it is better than Bayo 3. Um, but it's a nice game. So I don't really want to spoil it for people, because the story is part of the appeal. It probably has the best story of any Bayonetta game. So, you know, the story is a, a good part of the appeal in it. So, spoilers. I have a theory, okay? Right, you know the way that they basically show or imply that uh, reincarnation. I'm trying to be vague so I don't spoil more than I need to. Reincarnation is a thing in Bayonetta that we maybe didn't know about before, but a certain character is a reincarnation of another character. It seems to be right. Well, I think what they should do, if they're not planning this already, what they should do, right? Because I was so sad that Puka was killed at the end of the game. I was so sad, right? Because he's such a great villain. Yeah, I know where you're going with this. Now, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's such a great villain. 
Puka is Enzo. That's my my fan theory, right? That's my head cannon until proven otherwise. Puka is Enzo. They need to lean into that and make it real because he was too good to throw away after one game. Um, yeah, he was one of my favorite villains in the in the series. The the other villain, the game has another villain. The other villain is also very good, but Puka was. Puka is great, and I want Puka to be Enzo. They have a similar vibe, if you think about it. Yeah, you said it to me after, after we finished it's, it. I can see it. Come on, it would be great. It would be so good. <clears throat> reason. Knowledge and reason. Knowledge is SMT5, though. Necessary for what? Yeah, necessary for what, dude? This is your... <laughs> yeah? <laughs> your dialectic is weak. <laughs> she can get me. <laughs> uh, it's knowledge and reason that... Yeah, okay, they're necessary. I was gonna say no. I mean, if he's gonna <laughs> be vague. He's trying. He's, he's a paper. He's made it. I feel like I still haven't found out whether that talk actually works. Or... Yeah. But is it just him that goes? No. Yeah, it is. So that, yeah, you still have to attack the rest of them, basically. Unless you want to pass back to Demi Fiend every time, which I'm not going to do. Yeah, that's true. Apparently Platinum didn't know which Bayo to release first, as they developed both at the same time. Uh, Origins are three. <clears throat> I think uh, it's kind of unfortunate that they released three first, because I think the story would have been better received if Origins had come out first. I don't really want to get too into it, because it'll just be spoiler after spoiler, but the... The story, I think, make, resonates more and makes more sense if you play Origins first. Not that I did, but I imagine that it, it would be. I don't know, Popcorn Bunny, do you believe that Hijiri is an elf? That's like a theory about this game that, talking about reincarnation actually, that mm. the guy, the journalist guy, is a reincarnation of um, the protagonist of SMT2, I think it is, I'm not sure, but I don't know, I haven't played SMT2, it's the only one I haven't played, and so I don't know. <clears throat> I think it was more or less stated somewhere though, that that, it, that is the case. Is the game audio too loud? Too loud? Yes. I don't think so. People were saying it's fine earlier. I haven't adjusted it. <coughs> but the microphone is a bit further away than it was. I'll boost the mic a little bit. Oh, Tatsudon read the book that I recommended. Did you like it? I think they asked me a long time ago what my favorite book was. Hmm. Oh. It's Dante. <laughs> What series is he from again? <laughs> okay. You can save now, right? Can I? No! Whoa, 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 hang on. I thought you could save in the overworld. Don't even save rooms, that's mad.
there's that's it says Yo Yogi, there's a, a park. Pretty sure there's a safe point there at the entrance. Okay, the demons aren't too bad here. Who is it in the, the remake? Is it Dante or Rido? I assume it's Rido. I think it's Rido and you can pay for Dante DLC. Mm. What's your preference? I'd prefer Rido. Mm. Yeah. He just fits better, you know? Dante is like a surprisingly good fit, I think. It's pretty scary. He's, yeah, when you get to that level of the... When you get to that level of the Amala Labyrinth, mm, it's like, it's like being it. hunted by Dante. It's, <laughs> you know, that's what that's what the demons feel. But, yeah, I think, I think I'd, I'd like Rido better. Yeah, I never thought I'd find Dante. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, it's a DLC for Dante. No, you put the last things. Uh, uh, yeah, that's what I like about it as well. It's kind of like you get, you get both. You get like the sort of the fairy tale setting, but with sort of more mature writing. Mm -hmm. What's the best reason for remakes to be abolished? So many people are thirsty for them. How can we put a stop to them? How can we convince people that remakes are bad overall? <clears throat> I mean, even I could answer that. <laughs> well, what's your answer? Um, they take away people from like working on yeah. new stuff. Yeah. And like, you don't know what your your favorite game is going to be five or ten years from now. Like, yeah. Wouldn't it be better to see if your favorite game gets made rather than just continue to want old games that you liked? Yeah. Um. Uh, I've always kind of felt this way, but. I, I agree with all that. I've always kind of felt this way, but I am feeling it more and more strongly as the year go, years go by, and it feels like one of the one of those opinions that I have, which is hard to explain, but that some people in the chat will probably resonate with a lot. I understand, right? Not everybody has a PS2 or a, a PS1 or a, a Wii or whatever the fuck, right? But there's all kinds of all. You, I think the problem is people look at old games. I think Resident Evil 4 is a great example, right? When you play it, um, unfortunately, the graphics are kind of squished because... They did that letterboxing thing that they did for the Evil Within. They did that all the way back at Resident Evil 4 on the, on the GameCube. So it doesn't actually use all of the, the maximum resolution that a GameCube game can use, right? So maybe it's not the best example, okay? just look at this game instead okay right there's a remake of this <clears throat> and it's very hard to put it into words right but given the graphical limitations of the age the reduced resolution works in the game's favor and makes everything look more cohesive and from what i i never played the nocturne remake from what i know it's not bad but it's not the same you know it's just not the same as that's why I'm, I'm trying to use old footage for games whenever I can because it's just not quite the same the game loses something and it, it sticks out with me with Resident Evil 4 even though it's maybe not the best example because the environments just look so much more cohesive and convincing through the limited resolution when you blow them up onto a big resolution you see all the polygons you know you see all the edges you see you like you see that the textures are just texture i mean everybody knows this about old games right the floor there is just the texture everybody knows this but it all sticks out it looks like it's it's like when you blow them up they become the paper mario versions of themselves right where you're seeing all the paper that made the game whereas in this it's more cohesive and so that's one re that's another reason not to like remakes because they take old games like even remasters like the nocturne one or the you know just not even the new resident evil remake I i'm talking about here i'm talking about the version you can get on the pc or whatever it's it blows them up in in a way that they weren't never meant to be i don't know 
Well, it's kind of the fundamental problem with the way remakes are approached. Like, it seems, because there's so many of them, and, like, because people are so eager for them, they can really get away with doing, like, the bare minimum amount of work, when, realistically, if you wanted to do something justice... Oh, yeah. You'd really need to put the work in. Oh, absolutely. Like... Absolutely. Yeah. I think they have this misconception that it's just a very easy job, whereas getting it like if you're doing a remake in particular where you're building everything up again getting all of that right is not easy you know it's probably not all that enjoyable either right so you'd want to be really passionate about it another thing is like i mean in some ways it's probably harder than making something original because you can't help but be compared to something that already exists. Like, there is a definite way to get it wrong. Whereas if you make something original, yeah. it's kind of open whether it was intentional or not. Or yeah. you can be free to, like, sort of just go with the flow on things and see how it turns out. Yeah. But with a remake, it's like, you need to get it perfect for it to be a good remake. I do think... I do have somewhat mixed feelings on it though because I was thinking about um, Ghosts and Goblins Resurrection. I, was, I mean, this will come as a surprise to nobody, right? I already mentioned I was working on recommendation videos. I, I would want to recommend that game, so I started writing something for it. And the thing about that is all of the... It's almost a remake because <clears throat> many of the situations in it are not really new. You know, many of the enemy designs are not really new. The the plants that spit little eyeballs at you, the guys that wander around and throw stuff down on top of you, the level design, like guys crawling out of windows, and like the, it's not really new. But because games are games, the the difference between say the original Ghosts and Goblins, you know, like on the NES or something, it was an arcade game, I, but like. I'm talking about the first one I mean here, right? And the new one, it's just so different. Even though they have so much in common, every little change to the the way that it plays matters, right? Even if the visuals all look the same and the enemy types are kind of the same, where you place them and all that kind of stuff matters. So it's not really a remake, but it kind of is. And I kind of wish that more... I kind of wish that more games fell into that like what if again i'm ripping myself off here right because i've basically written this in the recommendation video but you can almost look at castlevania games as remakes yeah because it's always a belmont he always goes into a castle he always fights dracula you know there's very little difference between them and yet you can look at something like dracula x which are dracula x and rondo of blood they're both richter Specifically, they're both kind of the same game, but they're they're different enough from each other that they feel like they both deserve a place. And it would be kind of nice if more remakes were like that. Like, I haven't played Resin Resident Evil 4 remake yet, but I'm sure most of the scenarios are pretty much the same, except they probably play worse, right? And I I think it's it's a problem. Sorry. To keep going on about this but i'm kind of interested in it, in it in where my thoughts are going here it's hard to describe it's they could make a, re a version of resident evil 4 that's leon shows up in a village finds a girl called ashley and rescues her right that's like the basic premise of castlevania belmont goes to castle kills dracula right yeah. there's a kind of fundamental leon ashley castle village there's certain Thing. things you have to hit, yeah. but then the rest is kind of yeah. open to interpretation. But the problem then is, nobody would want like if they if they did that, but all the scenarios were different. How many people would be enthused about it? Not very many, because the thing that makes Resident Evil 4 great is the scenarios and is the things, is the setup and all the rooms and all the little moment to moment okay, things. So Those are what make it great. Yeah. And the I new developers would not be able to create a game that stands up to that. By making it all fresh and just keeping those few things the same. Okay, but right. Comparing Ghosts and Goblins to Resident Evil 4. Yeah. 
kind of the key difference between those two things is that uh, Ghosts and Goblins is like you call it extroverted, right? It's like an extroverted game. Uh, it's very mechanically extroverted. Yeah, well, I would say Rising Four. It is, is well. it is, but not as much. Yeah. Okay. So, like, you're talking about the scenario in Resident Evil Four being what makes it popular. Yeah. So it's hard to get rid of that. That needs to stay. Yeah. And because that needs to stay, it makes it much harder to remake in a sort of looser, yeah, interpretive fashion. Yeah. Yeah. So that means that like some games are going to be better for remaking than others. Or someone was saying that maybe reboot is a better mm. term. Mm. Yeah. But that kind of just goes back to uh, what we were saying. It's like if you're going to remake or reboot something, you need to be very considerate of what you're working with. Yeah. Well, I, I also think though that there's there's this difference between, especially between older games and newer games, right? But also in the way in the way that there's always rel the difference between, say, a hardcore player and a casual player. Is, is always relative, right? There was hardcore players back in the day, I don't know, speedrunning Super Mario Bros, and there's not even any footage of it, right? Because they were doing it in 1985 for their own gratification. But, so there's always hardcore and casual, right? But the difference now is that I think casual, there's a contingent of casual people for whom the mechanical moment to moment stuff is not the part of the game that is the primary essence of the game it's yeah. like leon ashley castle right whereas when you talk about ghosts and goblins ghosts and goblins fans are not like arthur prin prin the demon <laughs> king they, nobody gives a shit right yeah people but, find arthur charming and all but like is it even possible to have a casual ghosts and goblins fan <laughs> is that something that can even happen in nature my point is that nobody gives a shit about those elements really right you could make like if they made a game that controlled very similar but you were red armor instead or whatever people would love it like as long as it had the same kind of thing you know we gotta stop we're being bad we're both ignoring the, the, the chat. chat yeah the chat's completely left behind <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> should have tried to recruit them I just want to get to. I just want to get to the save point. I don't think you can. I think they're brutes or something. So I think they. Yeah, they might be. Yeah. Is luck important in this game? Uh, I think I have. I think I'm going to finish the game with tree tree magic. <laughs> I think I'm going to just leave that tree magic. I'm gonna I'm gonna give him a little bit of luck. I think luck is crit chance. It might be. Yeah. I think agility no. is... Never listen to your demons. Never listen to the bugs. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> Never listen to them. Just... I think you should try it. No, I'm in control. I'm not listening. You're not allowed to wriggle around. This is this is very much what it's like to work with Matthew on a regular basis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever. <laughs> Never listen to your co-workers. Never, <laughs> never do anything they want to do. isn't very useful. I am pretty sure I had a lot of it when I played through. Do you remember? Uh, no. It's, it's the kind of stat that I always kind of gravitate towards mm. for whatever reason. Who's my guy? Decarabia. Yeah, I like him. He's one of my favorites, I'd say. I, I was really happy that he got a, a prominent place in, a reasonably prominent place in uh, SMT5. <clears throat> I don't know what he is. I don't know what he represents. I assume he's an evil bastard. But... Uh, he's from the Key of Solomon, I think. Same as Fornius. The... I thought they were from the Goetia. Yeah, like, it's, it's I don't that know. Solomon? I don't know. Someone in the chat. I don't know, know my, my demon lore, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's 
on, look. Oh, okay. we, were, we were both right. I'm going to... I'm confused now. Don't use Pixie. No, I won't. I don't think you can recruit Slime. This guy is never gonna talk to me, right? It's a fuck. <laughs> Asshole. <laughs> it's gone off screen now. Somebody said something like, I like how Mr. X was weak to the save room door frame in Resident Evil 2 remake. Yeah, it's pretty absurd. Alright. Like it's important somehow, but I don't remember at all. Welcome to the Cathedral of Shadows, where demons gather. You should hire up the music. <laughs> I don't know if it's playing yet, but is it playing the music? Oh, it's the shining bright version. Next time. We'll get it next yeah. time. It's great. <clears throat> Am I too loud, by the way? Because I have to lean over a little bit to read the chat. So I'm, I'm sure you're fine. On top of the mic. Probably too low, if anything. Is it playing now? The regular music? Maybe that is the regular music for now. Maybe it's the other one that's the... Depending on the phase. I don't know. Anyway. Just level 8. What level am I? 5 or 6, I think. Oh, 8! You get the organs when it's full moon, yeah, yeah. Well, we're not allowed to fuse Pixie, right? Lunge. Uh, we the magic is kind of important at this point. Eho. Make sure you don't fuse Pixie. I think you lost her last time. You you fused yeah, her a yeah, bunch of yeah, times and she that. disappeared. <laughs> yeah, this is scary. I don't think there's anywhere to go around here. I hate the way. I think you can get into battles in the underground here. Maybe you can't. Yeah, to clarify, you can fuse her, but you kind of have to keep track of what demon you fused her into. Yeah. Yes. You get, what, a high pixie at the end or something? Yeah. No, no, you get... I think you can have her change into high pixie and then she reverts back to pixie when you find that room. Um, but yeah, you can keep her or you can fuse her, but I think it's harder to keep track if you forget. <laughs> There's no way you don't know what well, it would all be on stream anyway. I mean, I could just go look it up on stream and keep track of her that way. Yeah. Realistically, yeah. are you even no, going to finish this? No, no. I'll probably <laughs> never stream it again after today. It's in your hands, chat, after this. Oh, I didn't know that. Apparently the top demon on your list is always the oldest one. Can't you move them on your list? 
Probably not, actually, no. No, you can only summon or return to stock. Ah, okay, that's cool. Yeah. Learn something new today. Hmm. I have no sound, so I'm making it up myself. Why do you attack me? You're fucking dead now. You'll finish SMT3 for the both. That's great. Yeah, I abandoned Metroid Prime, but I finished Super probably five or six times, so I made it up. And Super is the better game anyway, so... Can I talk about that? How much you were always talking about? Super Metroid? Yeah. Nah, they don't need to know. They don't need to know everything. <laughs> 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 what can I say? I've, I've developed a huge respect for it. You know. Matthew has a few games that he always comes back to somehow. Yep. I haven't played uh, Super Mario Bros. 3 in a while. I was thinking about that the other day. The newest game I've played is uh, Mario Wonder. It's fun. I was talking about it earlier though. I don't, it's not hard enough, but blah blah blah. That's good. Honestly, I think if you thought about it, you could probably guess because he does it on stream as well. What? The games that you always come back to. <laughs> No, Sin and Punishment didn't replace Alien Soldier. I don't know what he said, so no, never listen to your demons. <laughs> um, you could at least try no. it. No, no, never. I'm in charge. It could be something really I'm good. I'm in charge, okay. You might as well- I am the Demi Fiend. Hear me and out. And I'm in charge. Hear me out, Uh huh. okay? Yeah. Better to try no. it. Actually, no. Never listen to your demons. I won't hear you out. You're not real. I won't, I won't, I won't hear you out. played any armored core. Uh, I played some PN03, yeah. Uh, I never finished it though. It's kind of interesting. You can you can definitely see it as a predecessor to um, Vanquish. Only I think you can avoid all damage, which is kind of nice, but the controls are obviously pretty wonky. You're going to get beat will, up. Will we do something naughty with Necromata?
Oh, that was bad. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. Did you save? I think so. You can summon. Summon. I'm not sure what she is. Zio will be my guess. Sexy is demon choice. I mean, I don't know. The first one that comes to mind is Incubus, but that's kind of Incubus. <laughs> Do I think of Incubus? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm more of a Succubus man or, you know, like a Necromata man or whatever, you know? No, I can't say I think of Incubus. It, it's like the card piece thing. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we beat her. Sexiest lady demon. I've always liked Lilim. Nah, not for me. David Bowie. <laughs> she's she. That's what she looks like. No, no, that's Lilith. Lilim is the. Oh the right. Dabble in the. You're gonna run into one around here somewhere. I think. She's in this kind of like white leather thing, and she's got like tan skin and the key out hair. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. She's pretty good. That Komata is cute. survive getting back to the fucking save room is the only thing You actually can, you can see Preta's dick, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't been looking, but I'm pretty sure you can. Did they remove it in one of them? I don't know, maybe. Looking good. Mm, part of the problem is maybe because it's balloon. Mm. Higher crit chance or something, isn't it? It might mean that you can't escape altogether, maybe. I'm just gonna have to go for it again. Oh, I'm surprised he didn't die. Yeah, there might be a higher crit chance as well, I think. I'm 
I'm reluctant to try escaping because I don't think that it'll work. I don't know. It might be related to the move. One step and get into another battle though. Okay. I think maybe there's no battles out here. Satanta. I think. Well. It's costly. Still, oh for fuck's sake! It's just gotta be your man, the journalist stuff. I think, yeah. The relief of the same room. Oh, there we go. What's your opinion on Digital Devil Saga's mantra system? Uh, is that the 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 skill system? I don't I don't like it as much as Fusion, but I don't blame them for trying something else. It's kind of nice for them to try something different, you know. Oh, I'm probably alone, yeah. <laughs> Pretty sure you can find Lulums in here somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe it's somewhere there. Ugh. I'm so impatient, I always put it on auto whenever I can, but fucking slimes. Yeah, what do you think of non-lethal options in games being practically identical to lethal? Isn't that a cop out? Um, no. <laughs> High Pixie is not better than Pixie. Uh, yeah, it is. I There's a couple of games that I've played that I wouldn't really feel comfortable judging just because I played them on PC and they I couldn't run them properly. Dishonored 2 was one of them. And 
I'm hoping I'm not going to open up a shitstorm here of questions, but I played Doom Eternal, technically. But I played it on a fucking Steam Deck, and it was really struggling by the end, so I don't know that I have a good grip on the game. Um, but I remember in Dishonored 2, they added a bunch of non-lethal things, and they're all the same as the lethal options. You just, you know, walk up behind people, but instead of stabbing them, you just knock them out or whatever. And it does feel like a cop out. It, it feels like non lethal should be harder than lethal, you know? You know I played it on the Steam Deck, so. No, I. Oh, to, to be clear, I played it docked. Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that to the game now. I wouldn't play it on the deck in handheld mode or something, but I played it with a mouse and keyboard. But, um, I'll be back in a minute. Sorry fellas, I'll be back in a minute. Hello. I thought I was doing a good thing before the stream started. I thought, well, it'd be nice to have a little drink or something on hand. So I got a big pitcher of iced tea. <laughs> and that's why I've been taking so many breaks. If you're a streamer, I would not recommend. And the wench is gone for a few minutes while I'm up, while I was getting up. Hello. 
I'm doing okay. I'm really liking the Steam Deck. Yeah, I haven't streamed since I got it. Um, I'm really enjoying it. It's good. You gotta stay hydrated. I don't think Ice Tea will do that to you, though. <laughs> um, yeah, it was good. Um, I played a bunch of backlog games. I played some more recent games on it, like Pizza Tower, Can of Wormholes, which I enjoyed a lot. Um, played some older games on it as well, just things that I missed. I've played a lot of games this year. So, it's been a busy year, but I have played a lot of stuff, at least. I feel like I need to try and keep current, you know? But, yeah, there's still a lot of stuff I haven't played, like Baldur's Gate or whatever. It's really good, but it's not... It wouldn't be a laptop replacement or anything like that. Don't get the point of the Steam Deck. Why do you like it so much? Well, first of all, it's very good value for money. I mean, maybe I'm wrong, but... I'm pretty sure Valve is selling them at cost or even maybe at a loss. Um, which is not a deal that you're going to get if you just go out and buy a computer. And it's just nice to have a dedicated... Like, I've always wanted to have a dedicated do-nothing-but-play-games-on-it PC... And I've never been able to do that. I've always had to use my PC for work and stuff as well, you know. Um, so it's nice to just have the games sequestered off into their own thing. Um, I don't know, maybe in the two years since it's been out, the costs have come down. But I, I guarantee that the deck was not... If it's sold at a profit, it's not a huge profit anyway. Um... You got to think about everything that you're getting in there. You know, the performance on it is pretty good for the form factor that it is. And you're getting a screen and a controller built into it. The memory, you know, it's it's a good deal, I think. Again, I could be mistaken. I'm not I'm not the biggest hardware guy. I don't know everything about hardware, you know. But, uh, but yeah, the Steam Deck is just like a great way to have your own little PC environment that... You know, when I'm working, I go, right, I'm done. Switch off the computer, boot up the Steam Deck, and I'm just in a different mode then, you know? Um, I haven't done any emulation on it at all. No. Give me a second. Talking about the Steam Deck. I've been using it a lot. But yeah, I haven't done any emulation on it or anything like that. I think it's impressive how much stuff runs on it as well. It's not flawless. Um, it's not flawless. But uh, there's a bunch of stuff. I think the only thing that I can't play right now that I want to. I mean, there's a bunch of old DOS games that I, I think probably don't work on it. You know, I wouldn't mind booting up Dungeon Keeper or Team Hospital or something at some point. Um, and I don't know if they work. Maybe they do. Um, but I was going through a bunch of games. Like I've been recommended games. And I've been looking for games and stuff. I think the only one. That I want to play. And this is going to drive the guy mad. I can't remember his name right now. I'm sorry. But uh, he's a patron. And he's been on streams before. He recommended it to me years and years ago. It's called Tower Climb. And I wanted to play that. And it wouldn't work. Apparently you can do a bunch of tweaks to make it work, but I'm just leaving it for now and I'll circle back around to it at some point. Um, so I, I did, I tried to play Tower Climb and I couldn't after all these years. Um, but everything else, 
that I've tried has run flawlessly. Don't drink out of that. I'm not gonna drink out of that. I'm just fidgeting, I'm just holding it. I have a big jug with all my, <laughs> my iced tea. <laughs> Yeah, well, <clears throat> uh, Pangor says, Tower Climb would work on anything, even your old PC. Yeah, it's not about the performance, though. It's the fact, I don't know how many people know this, but it's a Linux machine, and it has to use a, a compatibility layer called Proton, which basically intercepts the, the calls and you know it converts it in real time is my understanding anyway over to linux so it can run on linux and not every game works with proton so that's the problem it's not a performance problem it's just a problem with the compatibility because it's a linux machine that's all you've really enjoyed it so far though mm. having the steam deck yeah i think you're just it was well worth it i think you kind of like even if cost wasn't an issue i do think you just have like a, a console hardware bias Kind of. Not probably not nearly as much as you're thinking though. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like I would like to yeah. have a nice machine, you know. Yeah, but let's be real. If you could have both, if you would have a nice PC and a Steam Deck, you probably would. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but there are certain types of games that, like, it is nice when I was playing Pizza Tower, sometimes I had it on the TV and sometimes I was playing it in handheld mode and it was nice to be able to swap between them. I really like the size of it as well. Um, the Switch is a bit small for me, so... Control is pretty good on it, yeah. And the back... The back buttons are not as easy to press as I would like. I like the idea of back buttons conceptually and I'm surprised that they weren't, that they haven't been added as the default for consoles and stuff already. Um, but I think they, they they put two on each side and I think maybe they overreached with that. And that maybe it would have been better to just have one on each side if, if the, the one was easier to press. So they're a little bit hard to press, the back buttons. Um, controller is good overall though there's some interesting little features on it the touch pads are nice to have and there's a, a thing i haven't really used it for anything i, I love steam input by the way um, love steam input i think it's really cool the amount of stuff you can do with it is really cool um, one of the things they have is that the stick can actually detect whether your finger is touching it or not so it's not a button like r3 and l3 it's just, it has a touch sensitive kind of thing on, to, on the top of the stick so that you can activate the gyro only when your thumb is on the stick or whatever. I didn't really like that myself, but I think it's a cool feature to have all the same. What are you up to in this room? Um, just exploring this underground place, I think Maybe Chiaki was the only thing I had to find here, but there could be items and stuff that I missed. So.
Yeah, I think I would have been fucked if I tried to escape again. I forgot what she was weak to though, so I just used that, okay. Maybe could have tried talking. Oh no, she was kind of a mini event thing, so she probably wouldn't have listened. She dropped down from the ceiling or something. Probably a bit under level to recruit her anyway. Look at all those ray traced reflections on the on the floor. Wow. Ray tracing sure is amazing. ray tracing only <laughs> only the ps5 could render this look at that it's astonishing it's amazing only on ps5 what do you think how did they do that <laughs> <laughs> you must have some idea right yeah um well i can't say for sure it's always hard to say for sure how things are done right um but it's most likely just a copy of the room placed upside down that's what i was thinking i thought no yeah. that's mad nobody <laughs> would do that <laughs> Like she's not in it. Well, she's a demon, so. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but they did that all the time in old games for mirrors and stuff. I forget what you use the gems for in this one. They're not, um. They're not stat ups, are they? No. Are they there? No. You just sell them, maybe? I don't know. <clears throat> I think they changed what the stat up items were in uh, SMT5. They made them. They're like books or Incense or. Was it incense? But no, it's incense, incense was in this. always the level up thing. I don't know. I think it's incense in this. Hmm. Is it? Um, just let me talk. Ah. <laughs> She's so cute. <laughs> Probably talk to her now, but
I don't think I had quite enough demons to do a good fusion, but I'll take a look at what there is. Do you even know what you're supposed to be doing next? Just exploring? <clears throat> I think probably go back out to the world map at this point and look around some more, but I'm not sure. When's the first fiend encounter? Be a little while, yeah, anyway. It's in the tunnel. It would be kind of nice to get that out rather than... Mm. Yeah, I'm not loving any of this. Maybe you could try again when it's full. Oh, I'm just gonna get some more demons. I need to talk to them more. Well, I tried talking to Hoopa. Fucking wisps at the start. Hungry. <laughs> <laughs> I've been on iced tea for a long time now. I'm already late. Mm -hmm. I wondered if I should make you something, but it's, yeah, it's okay. It's okay. Get you some snacks. Nah, it's alright. We'll finish up in a little while anyway, right? a six button hack for alien soldier now yeah it might be kind of fun to play with that you can probably do all kinds of things I w uh, when I did that wonderful 101 mod I realized that it's basically the exact it's like a modern version of game genie it's the same thing uh, you're just putting in hex codes in the right places and modifying the values in the game I think I actually did that already because I think for Shinobi, the six button mode in the West, I'm not sure if there's a way to activate it in game. I think you might have to actually put in a, a game genie code kind of thing for it, but I'm not sure. But yeah, I, I don't know if it was done that way. It might be a bit too complicated to do it that way. The six button hack for Alien Soldier. Force. The, the reload time, or not reload exactly, but the, the weapon swap time is accounted for in the, the game design though, so I don't know. I don't think the game really needs it. I can tell Kami and make some game. I can't believe he's gonna be out of out of it for a year still. I mean it's been a few weeks already, but attention to any of the text I don't know where I'm supposed to go the you in the park yeah oh was it I thought I came in here before already there is a healing room here I knew it how did I not find that the first time I was here Fuck, I, I intentionally... Oh, it's on both sides. Maybe I went to the top one twice or something like that. I don't think I need it right now anyway. Do 
you play Vernal Edge? No, I didn't. But the name is familiar. Is that a new game or an old game? I don't know. I don't know. I can't picture it in my head. I don't know what game it is. So. The name seems kind of familiar. I haven't actually watched Harada's show. I've been watching some of the game dev stuff. You know, like Sakurai and Tim Kane. Um, I think it's nice that there's a bunch of devs that are... Uh, making stuff like that. I haven't watched any Harada stuff though. I've never really been into Tekken. So... Um, but I suppose I don't have to be. You know, he's got guests on and stuff. Sure, you can video was good, alright, yeah. That one got me thinking, alright. I feel like he almost didn't. It was a good video, but I feel like he almost didn't make the point clear enough to people who are just listening casually. Or maybe I read too much into it, I don't think so, but I think I'm pretty sure the point he was making was that, you know. clever because it's an anti-air move but it puts you into a vulnerable state to anti-air attacks and then that state gets even worse right before the anti-air attack comes out so you have this kind of like payoff curve of what might happen if you get hit which spikes really badly and then you know bang right and then then you hit your anti-air and like the table turns right it flips and now you're the one with the advantage it's just, it was cool i don't know that most people got what he was actually saying that was my point he might have been a little bit too brief on that one i like I like that sakurai's videos are brief um, Tim Kane, he keeps his videos pretty brief as well. He doesn't really overstay his welcome. Uh, but I feel like maybe that's one area where Sakurai could have made the point a little bit more clear because I'm not sure everybody would have got it. Tim Kane, is he the seagull guy? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he had a metaphor about seagulls that I thought was interesting. I think it was seagulls. He said people come up to you when you're a designer people come up to you with ideas and just kind of shit them onto your desk like seagulls and walk away and they have no idea how the thing would be implemented which which may have come up <laughs> he says may have come up i came into his room with an idea was it yesterday the day before it's yesterday yeah. i came into his room with an idea yesterday for our project uh -huh. and he called me a seagull <laughs> well, i said don't be a seagull <laughs> Yeah. I'm trying to remember what the idea was. I mean, it's probably best not to say it. I'm not going to be in the game. <laughs> but then we we talked about it and I can't put a, a yeah, I had to, but I had to push you. Yeah. No, you say yeah. you say you had to push me. You're in like yeah, I think it's a good one, but you're just like. Have you even thought about how it would even be implemented? Yeah. And you were annoyed. <laughs> so I tried to think of one that would be easier. Uh, uh, okay. We haven't talked about the project much, and I'm not going to reveal much about it right now. But there's like there's enemies that shoot things at you in the game, and so she said, wouldn't it be interesting if there was a shot that was like maybe it didn't hurt you, but it pushed you around somehow it's wide and it pushed you around yeah it was like and i was i was doing this more or less to make a point right but 
She said, wouldn't it be interesting if it pushed you around? And I said, okay. How? Right? <laughs> like, <laughs> what does that mean for the... How did the values change? What does it mean if I'm mo pressing left and, and the thing is trying to push me right? What happens? Yeah, well, that's not and, my job. But you hadn't thought about it to that degree. That's my only point was that you hadn't thought about it that way at all. Right? That's not my job. <laughs> Never listen to your demons. Yeah. <laughs> Never listen to your demons. <laughs> Seagull, demon, wench. What's next? Your new name is Seagull, I think, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, where are we going? Where are we going? Where are we going? Yeah, my thinking on it was it would be kind of more an environmental sort of hazard, like. That's not how you pitched it to me. That is how I pitched no, it. No, that's you. what I said afterwards. I said no, maybe it's it could not be an environmental hazard. You were busy okay. sighing and and calling me a seagull. <laughs> uh -huh. I've lost a I've lost the thread of this game <laughs> completely. I'm going around in circles. <laughs> It's not the park. You took Pixie to the park already. Uh, where are you supposed to go I now? Did, there's supposed, nowhere here to go. It has to be the park eventually. Because the park is the path, place with a path beyond it. Did you talk to everyone in the park? I don't know. Well, I'll try again. Locked from the other side. There's a healing fountain there, but nothing else. I can't remember if I don't fucking I'm ready to give up now at this point. I think I'm ready to start calling the quits for today. No, you've been walking around. I know, but what do you want me to do? I mean they tuned in to hear me talk and I talked. I look, I went on a tirade about Pikmin 4. <laughs> they got everything they needed out of me today. <laughs> Oh, that's a good point. A Mala network? So maybe oh, the, the fucking point? drum. Yeah. Oh. It would be good to yes. do something. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. I wasn't reading the text. I'm sorry. I do, believe it or not, I do read text when I actually play games off stream. I read what the NPCs are saying. Even in games where I'm really, really not enjoying that aspect of the game. <laughs> I pay attention. This is, if it's a guess, it's a good guess. I think you do have to, it takes you to a new area. Let's just save again. There was an, there's another control problem in Pikmin that I didn't even get to. I can't remember what it is, but there's the lock on. There's the fact that it stops when you are pressing, when you're sending too many Pikmin to an item, it stops you temporarily. Um, I think the way that you switch Pikmin could be better as well. It feels like sometimes it switches of its own accord. There's something else though. I can't remember what it is, but there's something else. What was the first one you said? Uh, the lock-on. Well, you were complaining about um, there's like you, when you throw Pikmin. Mm -hmm. um, when you reach like the maximum number of Pikmin. Yeah, there's... that too. I said that already. Yeah. Yeah. There's something else though. That that is. I wouldn't say that that's a terrible problem, but yeah, I don't really like the way that o Ochi thing was handled. Because you really want to, if you want to do your Dandori as much as possible, you want to split up, but only the dog can jump so it leaves you in this situation where unless you know the map extremely well 
you just take the dog because you might come across a place where you have to jump. <clears throat> oh, is this that um Legion boss fight? Yeah, it might be, yeah. So the visuals in this game are amazing. Mm. They really are. Thank you, whoever that was in the chat. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. I never would have done this. <laughs> I forgot about it completely. You need to do a video series where you just sit down and you just rant about whatever is on your mind. I actually thought today, I thought maybe it would be best not to play anything at all and just have a chat stream or something. So I feel like I would be more coherent and I wouldn't I wouldn't be doing stupid shit in games <laughs> that I don't normally do. I actually, sometimes I get resentful about how much attention I pay to the story in games. I'm always, whenever I play story games, NPC and dialogue and stuff I'm very rarely pulled into it but I always always give it a chance like maybe it'll turn around maybe it will turn around just keep reading it keep paying attention you know the devs put the work in pay attention to what everybody's saying I thought I was using that NPC <clears throat> No, it wasn't the three Pikmin limit, although I don't like that. That, that to me, is a really, truly baffling um, restriction because taking more... Just having the limit of 100 solves that problem already. You know, because taking more types of Pikmin necessarily means taking fewer of each type. I mean, that that's elegant, actually. That interaction between the 100 limit and all the types... It's elegant, and then they just slap this inelegant tree type restriction on top of it. Very strange. Yeah, so I didn't like that, but I was thinking, I don't, maybe I'm wrong. I was thinking that there was some third kind of major control issue with the game, but maybe there isn't. Oh, actually, I have a question for the chat. Um, I'd like to watch a scary movie today, but I don't know what to pick. So I'd like if uh, you have any recommendations. Matty doesn't like scary movies, but he has to indulge me on Halloween. heard good things about, about it. You haven't seen it? No, did you see it? I actually watched that at some point, yeah. What the fuck? Yeah. Uh, I watched... I, I didn't like it, but I don't like horror films anyway, so... Uh, I watched Hereditary. I think we both watched Jacob's Ladder together. Yeah, that was when I wanted to make a Silent Hill 2. Yeah. Analysis. Um, I watched it partly as research, but I never, never did it. The Wicker Man. There's a, there's a Nick Cage version of The Wicker Man with these. Have you ever seen the screenshots from it? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I watched the new Suspiria recently as well. That was great. I would recommend that to people. I was surprised how great that was. The new Suspiria. Um, I'll just uh, I wanna, I'll talk about the horror film thing for a minute it's another thing I've been tempted to do maybe I'll just do other analysis maybe I'll talk about films huh? <laughs> maybe I'll talk about film what, what would you think of that uh, I actually thought about doing a little blog post about films or something um, but no I'm not an expert on films anyway what, what I don't like about horror films is that a lot of them are just completely without substance. You know, thematic substance. Um, they don't really have any kind of... 
they don't scare me mm. you know um so they that you know that that's a way that i'm missing out obviously but also a lot of them are just kind of pointless i think um, Suspiria is not that. Now, it's not the most thematically rich film, but it's, it's actually worth watching just as a film. And it also works as a horror film. So I really like that about it. There's only a few straight up horror films that I really like, like Alien and The Thing. The Shining. The Shining. The Shining is kind of like, yeah, that's kind of, again, there's at least some thematic substance there, you mm -hmm. know? But Alien and The Thing are pretty much straightforward horror films, and I really like them. But apart from that, there's not a huge amount of horror stuff that I like. But Suspiria really surprised me. I actually like it. I'm talking about the new one, by the way. I haven't seen the old one, so maybe it's worse than the old one. Oh, we but. watched that um, that doll movie recently. What was it called? Megan. Megan, yeah. yeah. Oh, God. Yeah, but who said the curse out film? Cure. There. Oh no, that's a different curse out. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll, I might watch it though. Cure. Yeah, it's it's kind of it's kind of hard to find a good horror film because you know you look at them and you like, don't really know what you're gonna get. And yeah. like more often than not you're just gonna get like shocky jump scare. Yeah. I, I think also I mean it's kind of a mean thing to say, but if if a film's not gonna have a huge amount of substance to it, you can at least enjoy the craftsmanship of it, right? And I think that's where the thing but particularly Alien excels. Like the craftsmanship of Alien is just beautiful, you know. The set design, like everything about it, is just beautiful. Like, even the fucking the way that logo comes up at the start, you know, is just they cared about everything, you know, and that's why it's great. But a lot of horror films tend to be lower on the effort spectrum, let's say, you know. <clears throat> Yeah, I wouldn't really classify it as a horror film. No. Uh, he got me to watch Stalker mm. for the first time recently. After threatening me with it for like, what, two years? <laughs> Stalker is available on YouTube, by the way, officially. And it's in good quality. So, um, well worth a look. But yeah, that's a, that's a wonderful, wonderful film. Matthew isn't very affected by horror, but I am. Hmm. Yeah, horror doesn't really affect me very much. <clears throat> Especially horror games. I have a really hard time with horror games. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know that I have any, like, I, I do enjoy them more than Matthew, but I don't know, it's kind of hard to yeah. think of them as favourites. Yeah. I guess that new Suspiria. Mm -hmm. But it's like the kind of thing where it's, um, it's modern enough that you almost feel kind of guilty saying it's your favourite. <laughs> yeah. It is great though, it really is. I forget if there's a save point or like a way to recover when you're in here. Oh, Rosemary's Baby is good. Have you ever seen it? Yeah, it's pretty good. 
It's kind of got the thing you were talking about. There's like yeah, some there's something. To yeah, it. there's something to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same for Jacob's ladder, actually. There's something to yeah. it. Yeah. No country for all men. That's the one with the. You gotta watch that. Yeah. yeah. Kind of, actually, it kind of be, is yeah. our <laughs> film. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. In a way. More so than some that's, straightforward horror films. That's one of like that's film is shockingly rewatchable. <laughs> you know, I could sit down and just watch that film right now without complaint. And there's not even that much that happens in it, but it's shockingly rewatchable. Um, I, I think it, it's surprising. It's surprising in the same way that um, I re we rewatched everything everywhere all at once. Yeah. And I expected that to be a very rewatchable film, and it wasn't bad, but it actually didn't hold up as well on the rewatch as I thought it would. Yeah, you're not surprised yourself. So. Yeah, it does kind of rely on that. Um, no Country for All Men is like the opposite of that. You watch it the first time, and it's just, yeah, that was good. I had some good scenes, and I don't know. It's just unbelievably rewatchable. I don't know. It's fantastic. I haven't seen Killers of the Flower Moon yet, no, sorry. I think one of these is... yeah, here we go. Yeah, I feel like I've watched Fight Club with you like three times now. <laughs> it's a very rewatchable film. You have to. <laughs> yeah, it's great. We watched that girly movie as well. What was it called? The one with your one. Promising Young Woman? Yeah, Promising Young yeah. Woman. I had such high hopes for that film, but it was actually pretty shit. Like, it was alright, but then the ending, I just I found the ending very disappointing. <laughs> yeah, I... I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I, there was like that bit in the middle of the sort of romance montage, and I thought they were taking a kiss, but now I'm not so sure. Yeah, it's... Uh, I didn't find your man very convincing, or the romance very convincing, but maybe I just don't know. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I should just leave it there. I don't know. <laughs> I don't think I should talk about it. <clears throat> well, I thought it was just perfect. And I thought it was going to be good. Uh, American Psycho is the movie. Uh, I mean, there's scary stuff in it, but that always seems to me like more of a comedy. Yeah, it's not really a hard film. Yeah, we watched um, Millennium Actress recently enough. We've only watched it, it a while once, back, though, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was good. That was good. Mm, you've seen Perfect Blue as well. Mm. Yeah, Perfect Blue is kind of a horror movie. Yeah. That might be my favourite thing that I've seen of Satoshi Kon. A thriller? Yeah, it's a thriller. It's kind of got horror undertones to yeah. it, I would say. Uh, I get scared really easily, but I'm also the kind of person who, like, if the movie has, like, a, a lot of, like, visual appeal, a lot of aesthetic feel, like, I kind of get past the, the fear and just sort of enjoy it. So in that sense, it's kind of helpful for me to watch a weaker horror film. Because I wasn't scared by Suspiria. I was kind of just savoring it. <laughs> yeah. The last movie, the last horror film I watched that like properly scared me was It Follows. Yeah, that was pretty good. So anything in that kind of line. That was really scary. Did you know that was really scary? The monsters, it, it was good. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I love that. 
like w way scarier than a jump scare. Like just the thing just, just walking. Ugh. There's something I, it's like they kind of um it's like a horror trope, you know. Oh, I got an idea. I hit that by accident. Uh no, never listen to the demons. What the fuck? Um Ah oh, fuck. Ah oh, fuck! Oh no. Oh, can you stop? Maybe it's no, like Pokemon no, no, no. if you have our beat. No, don't think so. <laughs> Change back, please. <laughs> um, it follows. It's like the horror trope of the killer walks really slowly toward. It's like they weaponized that, you yeah. know. Yeah. The, like there was other parts of it that were scary as well. Like you're one on the beach, like so you get to see what it's like when he actually like catches up to you, or, like the the thing when it catches I don't up to you. That. She's like fucking bent into a pretzel. She's like all all like broken and. But it wasn't like super gory, it was just. Hmm. Oof. I might have seen some of that years ago. Um, it, seemed, it seemed like the kind of film I wouldn't enjoy, but it's probably quite scary to most people. I'm just not enjoying them on their scare factor <laughs> kind of <laughs> level, you know? We need to watch a sci-fi for that. Yeah, I find sci-fi stuff scarier, yeah. Because it's more plausible. You know? This was like... Um, this was a big difference between Amnesia and Soma for me. Soma is actually kind of scarier. I know it's not really that scary, but something about sci-fi is just, it's more grounded to me. Like the horror necessitates supernatural more or less, right? But when you frame it with a sci-fi thing, it becomes more grounded in my mind. And so um, easier to believe and stuff, you know? remember that time years and years ago you sat me down to try amnesia and i got so scared i hid in the cupboard in the game and didn't come out and quit <laughs> i don't but it sounds like something you do all right i'm, I'm kind of a wuss when it comes to horror stuff like if it if it gets me right like i was i was so scared you're probably gonna think this is silly i was so scared of the underground in can I talk about that? Does that count as a spoiler? I think that would be a spoiler. You nearly... Okay. It would to me, because I didn't know about it until we played the game. But It's been out for a while, though. It's been out for a while. Okay, well, there's a certain game. That... Everyone knows what you're talking about yeah. already. The people who know know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, there's a certain game, and there's Underground, and I was so scared of it, I refused to go down <laughs> for a long time. <laughs> and Man, that, that was pretty crazy, all right. Yeah. Yeah. You remember that time I jumped in the well and panicked yeah. so hard. <laughs> so yeah, I'm definitely weak to scary stuff. But like, as I said, more so games than movies. Yeah. I do. Games get to me more. If the, if I'm not scared, I at least get tense sometimes yeah. with a, a horror game, you know. Uh, I won't say the game, but it's not a horror game. It's yeah, just it's me not a horror being game. a coward. Yeah. <laughs> it's like I'm putting a catch-22 now because she's already said the spoiler. So if I say spoilers for such and such a game, <laughs> that's it. There's no way for me to give you a spoiler warning. Um, But it's not the kind of thing that most people would think of as being actually scary. you know. I'm still scared of it. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. <laughs> There's like another thing in, in a certain game that also scared me. The, the thing, the thing, do you remember when I freaked out? The thing on the, the hillside? No, I don't know. <laughs> I have a head like a sieve, I really do. It's a thing that you see several times in this game. It's like a, a part of the game. With hands. 
Oh, you're talking about that the same game. The same game. Oh, right, right, right. Game. Okay, yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. A certain enemy type in the same game. Well, that one is scarier, though. That's that scary. one is genuinely yeah, intended to scare people somewhat, especially when you realize how dangerous it is. Oh. Yeah, that's the scariest game I've played in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe playing a horror game would be better than a movie. Maybe. You're not going to want to play anything after this. The problem though. is, I, I'm going to have to be the one who plays it for <laughs> your benefit, though, right? So. I really I have to be in the right mood for somebody. You know? It's yeah. just one of those ones that's like. If you try and play it when you're not in the mood for it, it's miserable. I will, if chat reminds me, I don't know when I'm going to stream again. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Um, I don't know when I'm going to stream again. I'm sure some of you want to hear more about that underground and stuff. <laughs> but you'll have to remind me next time so that we can disconnect the, the spoiler warning a little bit for people. And yeah, I do. I take that seriously because it's not something that was known about. So... I think it's better to no, talk about it. Yeah, I'm sorry. For, for the latecomers. I'm you know? sorry for all that's those okay, that's okay. It's okay. It's okay. We're very good if we make mistakes sometimes. That's okay. We're usually very good about that stuff. See, the problem for me with playing survival horror games or just any horror games in general is that I get so scared. I basically don't move. <laughs> So I end up like just spending so much time just like creeping around corners. Mm. In a way, I kind of scare myself more than like the game. Yeah, you can make it worse on yourself depending on your attitude. This is a fight. I don't want to go into it with full. Edgar, 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 you've <laughs> you've stepped into it because you've 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 done something nice, but you've also you've awoken the beast. Ed Edgar says, uh, <laughs> by the way, thank you, Matthew, for putting below in the extrinsic motivation video. I enjoyed it and didn't know about it. You're welcome, and I'm glad you enjoyed the game. Um, I did too, even though I found it frustrating at times as i'm sure many people did and there is many games that are kind of similar that i would put above it for example i think rain world has a similar kind of appeal but is a lot has a lot more going for it thematically and stuff so i would definitely recommend that first but you've inadvertently revealed a flaw which bugs me I was thinking about this recently, right? Because I've been thinking about how I've spent a lot of time this year playing stuff, like trying to catch up on the backlog, but also there's been a lot of releases that are worth playing. And it's nice how... Um, I haven't told them what the video is, but I told them that I'm making another oh. theory video, okay. right? Yeah. And it's nice to think when I make another one, like everything after meta micro videos kind of feels like a bonus to me. Maybe it feels like a bonus to you. So it feels fun to me to include games that came out after that video below isn't one of these right but i was thinking you know oh, maybe i can use a little clip of mario wonder in the next video or something that'd be fun right it's like who would have thought that i that the matthew matosa ch channel would be around long enough to have <laughs> mario wonder in right and now it's getting it gets mixed in with all those other games that i've done and that's fun but what i was thinking was 
I spend all this time playing games and I don't talk about all of them because I'm not all that comfortable about it because I, I want to be fair to developers and you know ideal like every game I've reviewed I've played twice I've made like some tiny concessions there you know but even for something like Zectronics games I deleted my saves and started over fresh on them so I've played every game that I've reviewed twice I think maybe there's some exceptions there in the little thoughts on videos that I did but the point is I played a lot of games and I was thinking despite how many games I put into a video like meta micro videos if you were to just go by the channel you would think I've played less games than I actually have because I don't always like including them and so I was kind of reluctant to put below into the extrinsic motivation video because it's not a game like I wouldn't do a wholehearted recommendation for below I think the game probably didn't get enough attention and there's a lot of people that would enjoy it more than I did who haven't don't even know about it and so I kind of want to highlight it for those people but at the same time I think there's this kind of problem where it feels like almost everything that I put into a video is an endorsement right that this is the point I've been trying to get to if and that worries me I don't really like that so I don't want people to see it that way like me putting below into the video was not an endorsement right in the same way that putting shinobi like i think this is more obvious with shinobi in the context sensitivity video because i'm using it as a critical example most of the time that's not an endorsement and that's not to say it's a bad game but it's not a recommendation of like you have to play this and that's something that i struggle with and i'm, I'm thinking of loosening up on that but so that's part of the reason why i wanted to say this out loud it's it's not yeah <laughs> He says, Matthew hates below. Yeah, that's that's the way people take these kinds of things. It's not what I'm saying either, you know? <laughs> I know you're only joking. I know, I know. But that is kind of worrying to me that people saw below in the video and were going, oh, I should, I should look at this. Because maybe I'm mistaken, but there wasn't really anything in the extrinsic motivation video that makes you go oh that looks like a very interesting game right there was a few little bits of footage it's just that it stood out to me because it, it felt like it didn't do a lot to string you along it's the kind of game that didn't do a lot to string you along and yet also you might kind of have a kind of sunk cost fallacy when you get to a certain point of it it's one of those so like it I, it, it was interesting to include in an extrinsic motivation yeah, I mean, video some, to sum you know? this up you kind of you choose games that are suitable for the video yeah the concepts being explored exactly <laughs> exactly and and i'm probably overthinking it right probably <laughs> overthinking it okay all right but i just want to make that clear that if i if i include a game it's not an endorsement of the game okay <laughs> We just I just pick games that from my repertoire of stuff that I know seem like they fit in properly, you know? See, you guys, you might not know this. I'll tell you a secret about Matthew now. Oh. All he does <laughs> All he does is he plays games and then he talks about them a little bit to me. And then he plays some more games and then sometimes he decides, hmm, maybe I have something to say to people about such and such. <laughs> I, I come out of my stupor and I say, the people must know. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much all he does. <laughs> I come out of my stupor and I say, the people must be informed. Yeah. <laughs> the people must be informed of the context sensitivity. Yeah, like it. <laughs> it's his hobby, it's his job, it's his recreation. You pretty much just play games. Right. Like, if you're just left to your own devices, that's what you'll do. <laughs> I tell you, I don't do it enough. I don't do it as much as I would like. <laughs> well, maybe. I've, I've noticed it more recently because you've had, like, that huge list. He has a huge list, by the way, of games to play yeah. on, on the desk. Yeah. And he's been working his way through it. Yeah. Um, you know, he is very good. I mean, you, you don't drop a game immediately, even if it seems not great. Hmm. I try not to anyway, yeah. There is some. Once I started, I played a bunch of stuff from the backlog and then I 
I started dipping into the stuff I was a bit less interested in mm. and I started dropping stuff more and I went okay now it's time to take a break mm. and like so I started playing some solitaire <laughs> 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 Exapunk solitaire yeah that's how he was like that's how he was refreshing between games he was playing solitaire <laughs> I kind of, I, I did you a little bit of a disservice there. If he's not playing games or talking about games, he's trying to make games. So, everything is game related. I got games on the brain. Sometimes I'll like be having a conversation. I'm, ho I'm a homo ludens, <laughs> as Kojima would say. Yeah, sometimes I'll be having a conversation with him about something totally unrelated to games, and he'll just start talking <laughs> about games. <laughs> And like he won't like start a conversation, he'll just come out with like a like a statement, like he's been having a conversation in his head. <laughs> I knew that I I knew I knew that I did that, but I was hoping that you didn't know I did that quite so much. <laughs> that like maybe I was getting away with it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're really bad for that. Yeah. You really thought I didn't notice? Well... <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, I'm gonna... I'm gonna... I'm gonna get KO'd here if I'm not careful. It's been a while since the last save. I'm gonna stop soon now anyway, we've been at this a long time. <laughs> I just steer every conversation to Morrowind currently. Yeah. Well, usually I have a specific game on, on, the, on the brain, you know? Like whatever I've been playing or something. She heard all the Pikmin 4 complaints. She heard the Pikmin 4 complaints after I'd done about one level. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I kind of wish I had played the demo for it so I knew what I was getting into beforehand. Oh, you have no idea. I've, I've heard some things about Wonderful 101. Yeah? Yeah, I've heard some things. You've heard things? But I'm not going to actually like that. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> but Nero the game says, did you do the laundry mat? Yeah, I think the quality of life changes in recent <laughs> SMT take away some of the charm of the system. That's pretty much, that's pretty well. much how it goes. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Uh, I've complained about the level scaling and everything. While Matthew is up here playing this game for you guys, which is great, can you guess what chore he has not done? I have to put laundry away. <laughs> <laughs> I have laundry to put away. That's something I'm supposed to do and I haven't done it. <laughs> But the people need content. <laughs> the people need content. What about yesterday? <laughs> I was generating a different kind of content yesterday. <laughs> Stuff that they can't see just yet. Okay, okay. What about the day before? <laughs> I don't know what I was doing that day. Probably playing <laughs> Mario. <laughs> Probably another heal room or something. This is definitely the region last night, isn't it? Yeah, it is. <clears throat> I don't think you come back in here again. Mm, you might be able to, but... It's 
isn't it right now, is it? No. Oh, fuck. <laughs> I was mashing too hard. Oh, fuck. This is it. You, you have to do this, though, don't you? Yeah, but I wanted to heal up and get some MP and stuff. Oof. Yeah, that's pretty bad. Mm. Well, I can summon someone. <clears throat> you have some chapter ups. I'll, I'll swap out. You might want to do something about the MP on PC. Hmm. Anything that we've both played like, uh, like played together. We haven't been playing anything together. Mm -hmm. The Maraji Rock might be good. If it's weak to it. Yeah, I don't know if it is or not. Jeez, that's not a lot of MP. Okay, yeah, no, it'd be ice. This is going to be the end of the stream, I think. I didn't know I was a boss. I mashed too hard during the dialogue. You can probably walk away from them if you say no. It takes two. We did play that together for a bit, didn't we? That's the yeah. bad game. <laughs> yeah, the, the, <laughs> just me here giving my subtle and nuanced opinions and... Oh, it takes That's two. That bad game, the one that we hated. <laughs> Alright, I'll say it. Yeah, I, I didn't like it. I didn't like it. Okay. That was just my opinion. Uh huh. That's just my opinion. It's just mine, okay? <laughs> no, I did hate it as well, honestly. I, I didn't enjoy it. Oh, we can. Rekunda affects them all. I might be able to kill one of these. Jesus, nah, I'm fucked. <clears throat> yeah, one game of the year! <clears throat> wow! Uh... Well... I didn't like it because I didn't think it was fun. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I thought uh, it wasn't fun to play, and the characters were irritating. Yeah, I found the characters irritating as well. So it's like the, there was um, <coughs> the only merit to it really was that we were playing it together. Yeah. Mm. I don't know. I mean, I say that I hated it. I didn't. I actually didn't hate it. I mean, you remember when we were playing it. Yeah. I was pretty, you know, relaxed and whatever. I, I think I would be more inclined to go back to it than you would. Um, it doesn't mean I'm in a hurry. Just... Yeah. I, think, I really think the characters kind of poisoned it for me. It's just very <coughs> dull or something. I don't know. Just like, I don't really want to play as these people and I don't really care about what happens to them. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I'm very interested in Baldur's Gate 3. Matthew's nodding what? his head. <laughs> I've, I've said... I'll I've... pick it up at some point. <laughs> I will, I will. I've, I've been saying it every every couple of days that I've won the Baldur's Gate 3. I'll pick it up at some point. It's still getting patches and stuff, so you don't have to be in a, in a rush, you know. Yeah. He's already threatened to ruin my party by playing co-op with me. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember what I threatened to do. Maybe it's best not to tell anybody if you remember, because I can't remember what it was. 
here. <clears throat> I threatened to be a bad party member to ruin all the all the interactions. Yeah. Uh, you have played Pentiment, haven't you? Yeah. Um, I want to play it, but I haven't played it yet. Yeah. Uh, I enjoyed I, it. It's good. I watched Monkey play like half an hour of it and decided I wasn't gonna watch anymore because I really liked how it looked. Mm. I suppose I can use items to try and salvage this, I'm not really used to using any of the items, but... Probably yeah, about the same amount. Oh, I got him! It was meant to be. Hey! Oh, you know what? I think maybe um, I have been making a mistake by ignoring the maggot. What are they called? Magatamas or whatever mm. the fuck they are. The I think they always have the same effect when they do that. When they wriggle around, yeah. Each one has a different effect. You is know, that what, how it works? there's different ones that you equip. So the first one is always a full recovery. I think. Mm. Um, oh, you mean there's like a list? There's like. You're not saying that they all do the same thing when they... they no, there's each one has a different effect. Every time? There's... No. E <laughs> <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake. It's like... There's, <laughs> there's a list of them. <laughs> yeah, there's a list. Each one has through. a unique effect, which it always does. Right. That's my thinking, I think. Okay. Some of them are bad, but you don't know which ones are bad until you try them at least once, I think. If this is it, if you're stopping the stream now. Yeah. I want to get to a save point and then I'll stop. If you get a chance, will you listen to a demon? No, oh, I just did. Did you? Yeah, I let, I let a guy change a skill from Zeo to begging, which I don't even know what the fuck that <laughs> is, but... Alright, but if it happens again... Will you listen yeah, to the demon? Yeah, I have a feeling I'll be listening to to a demon. Even after the stream's over, I'll have to listen to a demon. <laughs> Probably eventually, you know? Is that an upgrade or a downgrade? <laughs> Where is the heal room? Please tell me. I kind of want to step out, but the game is very cruel, so... Uh, that's... That does not look promising. Okay, this is a save point. Good enough. <clears throat> yeah, I think we should probably call it there. I could, I could probably go a bit longer, but... He needs to stop and do housework. <sighs> yeah. Stop and do housework. You know, I say that, but you're, there's no way you're not going to wander away. <laughs> <clears throat> I know for a fact. You will decide Co that you're... A couple of games F099 and then... Then, the, <laughs> then we'll be on to the housework in, in short order. <laughs> I absolutely guarantee he will not do the laundry today. <laughs> <laughs> All oh, right, yeah, I kind of, I don't know, I feel like I should chat to you a bit more. You're all saying goodbye, and I am ready to go, but I don't know. I, I, I never, whenever I stream, I never feel like I was, I gave you enough thoughts, and I never, you know, did enough. I don't know. So, I don't know, I hope it was entertaining, and I hope that there was some good, good chats to be had. You picked a weird time for it. Yeah. We got all the night owls this time. Uh, with regards to downpour, I'd say it's a little bit of both. I'm busy, but also I like Rain World as it is, and I am a little bit worried that it will, you know, work against the game for me rather than add to it. So I'm not really in any rush, but yeah, it's I just have a lot to play anyway, so. Still, there's huge, 
the games I haven't played this year. I'm never going to play Starfield, but like, for example, I didn't play Starfield. I'm never going to, but you know, yeah. I could, if, if time was no obstacle, I would just to see what the story is. He made an oh. offhand comment recently about getting the new Spider-Man because he doesn't have any games for the PS5. <laughs> and I told him, don't play Spider-Man. Yeah. <laughs> it would be nice to have a PS5 game to play on the PS5. <laughs> <laughs> I could think of a game. Baldur's Gate 3, perhaps. Just a thought. It's not really, you know what I'm saying though, like a nice spectacle kind of game, you know? I'm just admiring the visual effects here. It's cool. It's really cool. <clears throat> just a bunch of textures, I assume. Oh. This doesn't count. <laughs> no, hang on. It doesn't count. <laughs> No, I think that was, or maybe there is another boss, but I think that was the boss fight. I'm pretty sure the boss is a Legion and he's like No, I think the boss the... is where it splits and it has all those press turns. And... Right, right. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, that's a good suggestion. What? Talos Principle 2. That might be a nice one to play on the PS5 because it's a puzzle game. I would prefer to play it with mouse and keyboard, but it's the kind of game where I could definitely settle for controller. And it would look nice then. I was thinking of getting it on the deck, but maybe uh, maybe I will get that one on the PS5. That's a good suggestion. Anything else in mind to play? To play? Mm -hmm. On the PS5? Yeah, on the PS5. <clears throat> no. Is, there Is that a trick question again? No. <laughs> no. No. Honestly, I would prefer to play Baldur's Gate 3 on PC. Hmm. But, like, that's not happening. Yeah. Oh, I really want to play it, though. Yeah, I heard it doesn't even run all that well on the deck. They disabled the co-op on the deck for it, so... Oh, well, Returnal that? counts. I really enjoyed Returnal. It's just that I've played it already. I mean, I can play it again. I have played it again. What was that Alan Wake, not Alan Wake game that you played? You, control. Control, yeah. Mm. You played Control. Was that a PS5 game? I played it on the PS5, yeah. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> Parts of that game were interesting, but kind of... Really overstayed as well. Yeah. Yeah. That's the biggest problem with it, definitely. All the encounters seem to drag on forever. Yeah. It really overstayed as well. I don't know, maybe... It, it was, was interesting, though. It's kind of, And as well, I'm kind of interested in it because it's so heavily like i've never been interested in the whole scp thing mm. but it's so heavily takes inspiration from this kind of community creation yeah but like I that's mean, interesting they, they barely even did anything with that yeah there was enough i mean it, it is the federal bureau of control you know like it's, it's just interesting to me that it's like because it's a community created thing nobody has copyright on it Right, I presume I don't. I don't know enough about, it, but nobody has copyright on the idea of it, and so therefore they were able to make a game about something that's relatively recent, but also kind of not their IP. Yeah, you know, it's that's interesting to me. Well, and, like it, uh, yeah, it kind of operates kinda in the same way as like fairy tale stuff like that. Like anyone yeah, yeah, can it's use. collective. Yeah. yeah, but it's recent. That's what's interesting about it. It's I. I don't know how many instances there are of things like that, but yeah. Can you want to talk about before you go? No, I suppose I'm struggling to think of anything. There's been lots of news, you know, with Unity and, and Cameo and stuff. And, yeah, I don't know. Oh, it's was... mostly the Cameo thing that's on my mind. It, it's, it's sad to me that after already taking so long to get the next game from him that it's going to be even longer again. And that he'll never make another wonderful 101 related thing as well. That's sad. But, yeah, whatever. He seems to be doing okay. Mm. So, I hope he is. There was that other news from Sony as well. Your one that got fired. 
Yeah. Lots of upheaval there, it seems like. That's Sony. I don't know how much stock to put in the rumors, but yeah, apparently everybody's really unhappy about working on the games as a service thing. I think there was a story about, and again, I don't know how true this is, but I heard that Sony basically sent Bungie to play, some people from Bungie to play The Last of Us Factions to see whether it was okay, and they said no, and whether the game actually was in an okay state or not. That's weird. To have one studio come into another studio and kind of decide whether that project gets to live if that that's the impression i got about that and that was that's how would that not create huge turmoil between those two i mean they do i don't know if they do it anymore but back in the day the sony studios all used to share technology with each other and stuff you know yeah. and so that's strange if that's true that's that seems like a really weird thing to do you know <clears throat> i think it would be unfortunate maybe it's not real i don't know um someone was saying there rumors about sony dropping out of the console market i think mm. it would be a shame if that happened but i would also like to see them sort their shit out a bit yeah yeah they really need to get the ball rolling i mean like i have my problems with pikmin 4 and mario wonder but they are obviously good games at a minimum you know and so they've got Pikmin 4 and Mario Wonder and Bayo Origins and like there's loads of stuff for the Switch. And I know the Switch is well into its lifespan now, so that's to be expected. But I don't know, we're three years into the PS5 and there just hasn't been a whole lot of stuff, you know. So, yeah, it's not going to help canceling the canceling that game's not going to help either. Putting all their eggs in the horizon basket. Yeah, I don't know. It's It's pretty crazy. <clears throat> I think it, I agree with you that even though I'm not impressed by the PS5 it would be a shame to see them drop out because it's in a way it's less competition mm. but yeah I don't know it, it's interesting that I, I, I'm pro consumer so yeah. Sony releasing their games on the PC seems good and probably is good overall but I also like looking at the big picture you have to see that there's a big downside for them in terms of getting people to buy their console and maybe long term that does a lot of damage to them maybe and if that does a lot of damage to them that's less competition and maybe that's bad in the long term but point being even though it's nice to have games preserved on the pc and that's good like i i very much look forward to playing returnal on pc one day you know yeah with a mouse and keyboard it's also you can't roll that back at least not easily you know they can't just say okay from now on like and they had the change of leadership over there now you can't just say okay from now on no more pc releases we're back to just console even if they stick to that it'll take 10 years before that sinks in to people oh i really they're really not doing pc releases so they're kind of stuck with it now or they're stuck with the consequences of it at least for a long time and maybe they're happy with it, but it's a strange move, I think, in terms of getting people on board. So, I don't know what they're going to do. But, but, like, that could have been a good thing, ultimately. Like, if they were just making, like, if they're just churning out games, good games. Yeah. That, like, that could be something that would, like, win people over. It's like, oh, they're making all these good games and they're not sort of hoarding them in the same way Nintendo does. Yeah. And yeah, that yeah. could foster so much goodwill. But the problem yeah. is they're not doing that. Yeah, well, it I'm sure it has fostered goodwill for some people. There's some people that have played Returnal and Ratchet that never would and, and enjoyed them a lot, you know? So yeah. there is goodwill being generated, but I don't know. It seems like a strange move long term, you know? So I like it because it's pro-consumer, but I'm also yeah. a bit weirded out by it because it just doesn't seem, it doesn't seem to make any sense to me as a business strategy, you know? So... I don't know. Ten years time, there'd be no consoles, and we'd be streaming all our games, and you'll never own anything again. And don't end it like that. <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> Hang on to your cartridges for dear life, okay? Because they're not coming back. <laughs> yeah. Okay. No, it's been good. It's been good, and I don't want to end it like that. So there's always I think, emulation. I, I think it has been a good year for games. 
you know maybe people are blowing it out blowing it out of proportion a bit but it, I think it has been a good year for games and um, let's end on that now yeah that there's still more stuff to play and even if there isn't there's you can go play Nocturne right now for the PS2 <laughs> not the remake you can play the remake if you want yeah <laughs> it's probably good it's probably good yeah uh so yeah I enjoyed it I enjoyed this year as a, a lot of stuff to, and there's still good stuff to come like I imagine the Talos Principle 2 is going to be good as well um, but yeah I don't think I have anything more to say it is a bit of a downer I kind of want to keep going because I feel like <laughs> I did drag it, drag it down a little bit it is Halloween it's Halloween yeah but Halloween there's no like, there's no the depressing holiday there's a, a ha a happy holiday and a, a scary holiday but <laughs> where's the depressing holiday Christmas. where you just go and get sad Isn't for a Christmas while and... depressing holiday? <laughs> I haven't played Liza P no everybody's I haven't been looking at the chat so much everybody's looking everybody's asking about Liza P but uh, I haven't played it I haven't played Firmament either. I imagine it doesn't run very well on the deck. But it's... Uh, I'll get around to it someday. That's Valentine's Day. That's a good answer. There you go. Depressing. Yeah, the depressing day. Streaming games can't take off until we somehow get... Yeah, the... Yeah, the internet is still bad in a, in a lot of places. So, And it's unreliable even in places where it's good, so... All right, everyone. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. I hope this was a suitable game and I hope the discussion was okay. And um, get out there and play something right now or go to bed. You probably need to go to bed. But uh, yeah, I'll leave it there. Thank you. I don't know when I'll be streaming again, even though it's now technically Halloween for us. I'm not going to stream again later or anything, so... Um, it'll probably be a while before the next stream because I want to work on more substantial things like videos and a game. Um, so I'll be getting back to that. And uh, thank you for all the support and thank you for tuning in just to stream out of nowhere and get so many people tuning in. It's lovely. So thank you. And uh, I'll see you all next time whenever that is. Maybe Shmupmas this year. Maybe. Shmups. Yeah shmup streams for christmas because i did a bunch of sh shmup streams last year so maybe maybe a bit more shmup mess okay all right we'll see thank you thank you everybody thank you and for watching goodbye bye bye